Hello and welcome to a birthday edition of Go! Fight Rollers. <laughs> I knew it was going to happen. Just do it. Ow! Oh, I got me right on the nose. Why wouldn't this pop? Oh, right, puff okay. it, puff it. Thank you. <laughs> God, <that's laughs> oh, Where even is shit. this stuff? Happy birthday. Hello. <laughs> Happy birthday. Mm. Yeah. Merry, Merry day, day of birth. birth. Right, good. Where's your me. hat? Uh, it's on the beholder, actually. Welcome to High Rollers. I am a pipe pooper. Welcome. I'm trying to do the intro. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to High Rollers, the Dungeons and Dragons fifth edition campaign here on the Yorkscast Twitch. Uh, it might be live on High Rolls. We think it's live on High Rolls D and uh, So if you're sub to that, you can go over there and use all of our cool subs and yeah. chat with people over there. If not, it should be host. Overlay. Welcome uh, to today's episode, episode twenty of the campaign of Eroes. Uh, I am your dungeon master, Mark Sherlock Humes, and joining me. For this third anniversary episode, we have Rhiannon, Hello. Trot, <laughs> and Kim. Hi. Who are all having way too much fun. Then we have Tom, who we ramped up in the bunting because it wouldn't go up on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Katie so joining us as well. <laughs> I, uh, I used a lot yes, of duct tape on that. It was a, we tried to put it up. Yeah. Um, it's three years. We've been doing uh, we've been doing high rollers <laughs> for three years to well, not to the day. The day was on Thursday. But yeah. Pretty much to but the session. We're over three years now. Over three years now. So oh. thank you all very much, everybody who's followed us along the way. Um, it's not a particularly special episode. We just thought we'd get like some cool. nice. <laughs> can you Hopefully hear us? Hopefully they can still hear us. But uh, yeah, be uh, good. Audio is still live. <laughs> so for podcast listeners, which never hear this bit anyway, it <laughs> no, they don't. Uh, Steve will try and get Wirecast back they ASAP. Get that authentic podcast experience. Yes, this is We're what it's like. We're having a great tech. Yeah, at the moment, it's going very, very well. Why don't you well. plug the really podcast um, on while, well, while I'm tearing this a bit sounds, and making horrible noises? While it sounds yeah, like can you not do that? Well, I need to take it off. It's really annoying. <laughs> it's, it's, literally off, it's on your mic. Microphone. Oh, sorry. Sorry, this is going to sound awful. So professional. <laughs> oh, the Why podcasts are live. I, I hate this. They're not I, live. The podcasts are available on Spotify and iTunes and yeah. uh, and um, everything. Podbean, everything, really. not SoundCloud. Actually, oh. it's a weird thing. Apparently, you have to pay to do it separately to everything still else. But to still, something. I know. Big... There we go. Hello. We're back. <laughs> He's wearing um, like a little dress. So whilst oh, Tom yeah. tries to free himself, toga, toga. let me finish the introduction. Uh, <laughs> That was a really bad idea and we shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't have done it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. To carry on, a big thank you to our sponsors for this chaotic mess, uh, D&D Beyond. Woo thank you very much, D&D Beyond, uh, for being with us all this time. Uh, for the last, well, we did six months and now we've started a brand new, brand new yeah. run with them. D&D Beyond is the official Dungeons & Dragons digital tool set. It includes a compendium, a character builder. You can manage your campaigns on it. We use it every week. We've got all of our characters on there. The characters you can go and check out, they are public. Um, and if you're watching over on the High Rollers channel, there should be the Twitch integration as well. So you can hover over Stats. what we're doing. It's very, Why? very yeah. cool. Real time very stats. cool. That should be up to date as well. Yeah. Oh. Yes, we should have okay. some ones in the corner. Yeah, Trot did new ones and Steve's probably just trying to sort those out. Um, so yeah, big thank you to D&D Beyond. Thank you so much. Hopefully at some point soon we'll have potentially a new discount code to go around for people as well. Mm -hmm. Nice. So keep an eye out for that. Ooh, um, nice. But a big thank you to D&D Beyond. A couple of things to run through before we crack on with today's episode. Excuse me. The first one is we currently have a winter sale on for our merchandise yep. over on store.yogscast.com. There's t-shirts, the calendar, the 2019 calendar. I know that we're already into it's 2019, still but you can still buy it. Yeah. It's still useful and no you can get it for like six quid off right now. So pick up our HR calendar, and High Rollers calendar. And you can get even more money off if you use the code High Rollers. Yeah, at checkout. Off yep. At checkout, if you use High Rollers. And that's for the whole of the Yogscast store, not just us. Yeah. So if you want to pick up any- Kim merch. Any Kim, any <laughs> Hat Films, any Mark, anything at all, any DM High University Rollers shirt. Um, merchandise. Back quality, really. Just put in the code High Rollers at checkout and you get 10% off. You get 10% off. So you've got the winter sale on, that's out at the moment. One thing to talk about with merch, uh, the gem dice that we had, we did have some problems. Uh, they got emailed, so everybody who bought them should have had an email from the Yogscast kind of talking about the order of what was going on with it. Um, some people then got the wrong dice set. That's now being fixed. Um, just contact the store the or the store have already contacted you. Yeah, basically I was going to say it's the warehouse. Um, Mike, who handles all of our merch, is sorting that out with them and it shouldn't be a problem going forward. Thank you so much for your patience. We're so sorry for any disruptions. Hopefully people will get their very beautiful, very lovely gem dice. That's the, the most frustrating thing is, is they're beautiful dice. We want people to have them. And then the warehouse, kind of, yeah. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Anyway, There's a lot of things that are out of our control, but yes. And we thank want, you. We want them to be a good quality, yes. so we didn't yeah. want to like sell for less. Yes. Um, and then the last thing. I this is we very, wanted that delay. 
Shut up. <laughs> the last thing, which is very, very selfish, but uh, today is the last day you can pre-order the Caliana miniature from Steamforge Games. Um, you can go on my Twitter, and I've got links to the US and UK store. I know it's a critical role thing, but Caliana is very cool. Who? Jill, you haven't mentioned her We before. don't Shut know up. this. Shut <laughs> up. Who dis? This is brand new information. New girl, who dis? <laughs> it's my miniature. From it's a nice mini. Week. It's really, really yeah, cool. It's cool. Please pre-order it. Uh, <laughs> and then the last thing to mention is obviously if you have Amazon Prime, don't forget you get a free Twitch Prime sub every month. Okay. You can give that to the Yogscast or you can go spend it on the High Rollers D&D channel where we've got a bunch of cool emotes. Um, and then Tom's already mentioned the podcast and YouTube and all that good yeah. stuff yeah, as yeah. well. Um, and apologies for any technical issues. With that... There's a fan art in the break. There's fan art coming Ooh! up in the break. So we'll have a fan art video. It is birthday. Um, so with that, let's try and video. play the Aurora's intro video and hope it works. See you in a bit. Hello, oh Tom Hazel. <laughs> oh no. You do this, you get mad at me when I don't do oh, the intro shit, for the podcast right. properly. Yeah, okay, no, let's start again. Right, <laughs> there we go. Uh, so, welcome back to Aroes. Let's do a quick recap on what happened last week. Go on. No, don't do it. I can see you eyeing up those party poppers. So, for a quick recap. Our party of adventurers, having survived an airship crash in the dangerous lowlands, have made their way to a small city of Kaylee's Rest on the continent of Suvona. Each of the party have their own goals and tasks within the city. Uh, with Sorry. Carry on. Tom Hazel. I, I see what you've done there. I've wrapped, I've wrapped myself in party pop juice. Yep. Uh, each of the party have their own goals, as I mentioned. <laughs> Lucius, with the help of Nova and Quill, um, had uh, confronted some difficult personal matters at the Wayspire, a messenger post used for sending out letters and packages across Erois. Sentry, the Guardian, had met uh, several other Guardians uh, for the first time since her reactivation. These sentient constructs with limited lifespans, and they learn that one of them is nearing the end of their time. The others have suggested that they know someone who can claim to how to prolong Guardian's lifespan, but the details aren't clear, and that is a matter still to be resolved. A storm had been brewing over the last few days, and Ayla, the wild elf barbarian with strange storm-based powers, met with Kalo Otoma, an orc priest of the goddess Zephyr. The orc challenged Ayla, Ayla to a no-holds fight test uh, to see basically her, to test her willingness to put everything at risk to get the answers she's looking for. After being struck by a mortal blow, Ayla had visions of the goddess herself, who told Ayla that some answers would be close at hand and that the abbey held an elf similar to Ayla herself. Nova, Quill, and Lucius had stopped off an apothecary's to stock up on some supplies, uh, where they met a centaur kind of herbalist called Rosemeadow, um, before investigating a lowland sport called Spell Clash. Mm. Um, and they'd made their way from the herbalists to find the Spell Clash arena. I can tell you it is the 25th of Palace, which is uh, the first cycle in the period known as the Long Night. Uh, the weather is still abysmal. There are dark grey clouds overhead. The rain has been non-stop for the last two days, three days. Um, and there is a heavy wind that blows through the streets. Unlike the other roads in Cayley's Rest, North Street has been laid out with stones, and the ongoing storm has not turned it into a slurry of mud as the rest of the city has become. The buildings on either side of the street are well kept and have ornate signs and coloured windows. And hidden, be hidden behind these uh, houses and merchant homes is a large domed building. Across the, uh, across the domed surface, glyphs and runes of various coloured magic shift and pulse, and from the inside we can hear an echoing cheer of hundreds. Outside the dome itself, a small fenced-off area contains a target range, 
and a few several other smaller buildings have been positioned and dozens of young citizens are clustered around them excitedly talking, watched over by a squadron of six or so armed guards in a li livery of purple and silver. Lucius, Nova, Quill and Valor all stand at the entrance to this large open plaza looking at the large dome with its glowing glyphs before you. Um, and you can see that there are, yeah, there's these small buildings, you can see the large dome itself and there's entryways, kind of like a classic like arena, um, kind of carved into it. This is spectacular. There wasn't so much rain in my eyes causing so much stinging pain. <laughs> I'd be crying right now. <laughs> No, I am crying. No, it's, it's real tears. <laughs> that is real tears. Because from the rain, it's hurting. Oh, I haven't maybe. had this much rain. Lucius, you don't have to look up. If you just look normally, then... Yeah, <laughs> so your, big. Your cowboy hat has a wide enough brim yes. that it won't go in your yes. eyes. But I flicked it up so I could see the whole dome. Okay. Let's so, flick it down. Yeah. I mean, right. it is very official. It's very grandiose for such a, I mean, small town. Isn't it? Isn't I mean, yeah, it, I mean, Cali's Rest isn't a small town. It's it's more like a small city. Okay. It has like big stone walls. It's quite a few districts. Like it's quite stadium, large. Like... Well, it's, I mean, this it, it, this probably houses like maybe 200 people. It's not that big. It's not oh, like okay. the O2 Arena. Yeah. You know, it's not <laughs> Wembley Stadium. Um, it, it's, you know, kind of like a small theater almost. It's just built under this huge stone dome. Okay. Um, it's like the Hippodrome in Bristol. Kind of, yeah. It's, it's a local kind of theater arena kind of okay. uh, area. Okay. Um, and then the smaller buildings look to be offices maybe, or uh, uh, waiting rooms maybe for the actual uh, wizards who are participating. Mm -hmm. But from the sounds of the cheering, you can hear this kind of, you know, that deep vibrating cheer of the sounds of hundreds of people like clapping and shouting is kind of reverberating out from this stone dome. There's obviously something is going on inside. Yeah. We, we should definitely watch. I'm not too sure about taking part, you know? Yeah, taking... you'd be amazing at it. There's just too many people. But you Didn't expect it to be this big. Your spells are cool, though, and I doubt there's another, what are you, dichromancier? Yes. Let's go with that. <laughs> yes. Dichromancy. What are, what are you? Color magic. A dichromancer. Dichromancer. Cool. Yes. I mean, uh, do they do they let people like me in there with, with like light spells and things like that? I don't, I don't really know what it is. I don't know what's happening. Let's go find out, buddy. Yeah, we should okay. definitely go watch. Let's sure. go have a look-see. I mean, how much is it going to be to get a seat in there? Uh, well, you've, you're kind of stood at the entrance of this plaza. Like, you can see that there are like signs and posters and stuff like that. Okay. Let's go ask! And I'm going to go <laughs> up to the nearest person who looks like they're responsible. Okay. okay, yeah, so the probably the nearest person that looks responsible is there are guards in this kind of purple and silver silver livery and they've got halberds, you can see them with these long sort of like tall axe bladed pole arms. Um, and they're kind of scanning the crowd and the crowd is mainly like, you can see kind of citizens aged between anywhere from like young adult to teenager kind of era and they're kind of all hovering around one of these smaller buildings and they're kind of like trying to peer in through the windows and you can see that they've got like little books um, and like little, you know, pencils and stuff like that. Um, you approach one of the guards uh, and he kind of looks down. He's like, hello there. Can I help you? Hello, good sir. We are new to this town and Clearly. new to this sport. And we wish to know more. Well, and he points towards the dome where you can see there are kind of several of these archways. Uh, he says like, well, tickets and general inquiries are down there. This is for the duelists themselves. And he kind of gestures to the, the little kind of buildings. <gasps> How many Jesus. people are in there? How many duelists? Uh, there's currently about three or four waiting for their matches. Oh. Can we have a look? In here? No. Why not? This is for duelists only. Oh, right. <laughs> How do we sign up? If we were interested. He points to the dome. He's like, well, there is um, the arcanist's uh, assistant is around somewhere. She'll be near the ticket area. Um, you can inquire with her if you're uh, looking to become duelist yourself. And he kind of smiles. Thank you so much. Is oh, it? Bertie, we could take part. We could, can we? Is it? No, you could dangerous. Take part. Hmm. There is certainly I'd buy he kind of like <clears throat> coughs for a moment. I am obliged to indicate that there is a risk of harm, but of course we take the utmost safety precautions and all of our mages are trained in first aid uh -huh. and we take the safety of our duelists and of the audience to the highest standard. Okay. If someone passes out, do you stop the match? And, and okay. He's like, I think you should perhaps go and watch a match, then you'll understand. Okay. Right. Okay. Do you sell popcorn? I don't know what that is. Okay. 
Oh no, not the new noodles. <laughs> <laughs> he, he gestures. And you can see, um, as you kind of, if you begin making your way over towards the dome, uh, you can see that inside there is like these short corridors which lead into like an inner arena, and that there are these kind of holes, kind of like um, cloakroom kind of like little kind of areas. Uh, and there is a sign that indicates that uh, a general admission ticket is one silver piece, um, and that is for the matches for the day. So you can go oh. and come back um, and watch any later matches and yeah, stuff. That's cheap. For a, for a commoner, it's probably quite expensive. It's like, you know, but for yeah. you guys, ad adventurers or anybody wealthy like merchants, it's kind of nothing. Uh, for just a general admission ticket. Um, you Should can see there are like VIP tickets and stuff like that as well. How much is VIP? Uh, VIP is about 10 gold, but it includes like an actual booth and food and drink. Popped corn? Uh, no popped corn. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, they are, it is thinly sliced fried potato. I'm oh. down for that. Dauphin <laughs> What's that called? Uh, I don't think it would have a name. Thinly sliced <laughs> potato, like fried fried potatoes would probably just be what it crispy. Yeah. Are they salty and vinegary? <laughs> they are. They are quite salted. Uh, you can get them sometimes with with cheese as well. Cheese. Oh, we're talking oh. crisps. They're kind of like chips, crisps kind of cheesy, deal. Cheesy chips. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Stop making it. The, that's the the spell clash. Snack of choice. It's the, the nachos of Spell Clash. Are they sponsored Spell Clash? Yeah. <laughs> As a specific company. That's yeah. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, so uh, you go up and there is a there is a uh, human male. I'd say like a young human man, like maybe in his twenties. You can see that he's he's kind of got like very ornate looking wizard robes, but it's clearly a uniform. Like they're quite cheaply made. And he's like, hello, welcome, welcome to Spell Clash. How can I help you? Hi. Hi. Hi, we'd like tickets to the show, please. Oh, of course, there's a match currently uh, just about to start, actually. Uh, so just for the four of you? Mm -hmm. And he gestures mm -hmm. to you three and Valor. It's like, well, that's four silver for General, please. Okay, uh, I'll count four. Is, uh, is, is General more, more dangerous? For the audience? Yes. No, 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 of course not, sir. You're completely safe. Okay, good. Uh, the, the match takes place within the arena itself, which is magically warded. You're perfectly safe, cool. I can assure you. Good, good. I don't want to be hit by a wayward missile, you know. Oh, no, 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 of course not, sir. No, we have a barrier which protects the audience from any flung projectiles, fireballs, lightning bolts. None of that, none of that will actually harm the audience. Okay. Of course. What are the rules? Oh, well, uh, he's like, would you like a program? They're one copper apiece. Yes! Okay. You I'd love a program. It'll slide over a, a program. Ah, for look a at the quality. And it's it's a very uh, you can see it's being made on a, a printing press, like a proper printing press. Um, and it's kind of got that old westy kind of like the text is quite narrow and thin, but there's all these kind of very beautiful illustrations, full color illustrations mm. of Art Nouveau wizards kind of like shooting lightning bolt from their hands, wow. like wielding wands. Look at that Nova. Um, very very elegant art aesthetic. Um, and in it, it does describe the rules of Spell Clash. Uh, it kind of phrases it in very flowery language, um, but generally, I gotta find out my notes. Uh, it distills down to a couple of points. The first thing is uh, it it makes a big deal out of reassuring you that it's completely safe. Uh, Spell Clash is a completely safe sport for both duelists and audience. Oh, good. Uh, it, uh, <laughs> the magical like wards put in place protect everybody from duelists to audience, no matter where they are. Uh, each duelist is, a, is, uh, is enshrouded with the Spell Clash Shield, a unique magical spell developed just for Spell Clash arenas. Once a Spell Clash Shield has been broken, that, the, that duelist loses um, and the other is declared the winner. Almost anything goes in Spell Clash. Any spells of any color or style, magic, cr magical creations, fireballs, explosions of light, um, enchantments and more. Uh, any mage who harms another uh, Spell Clash duelist after their shield is broken is automatically disqualified. Mm. Um, an enchantment, and it says, Poisons. for enchantments, see nearest referee. <laughs> okay. nice. Indicating that there is some more rules that the audience would need to know. Um, but generally you get the idea that basically two mages go in, they have these shields, and what it's the first that? person to break the other person's shield is the winner, basically, is the general gist you get from it. Okay. Um, uh, just from the audience program, obviously there'd be more mm -hmm. dedicated rules if you're up to So I like point at one of the illustrations like This one seems, is he playing today? Is he in the, the, the game? Uh, those illustrations are non-specific. Uh, we oh. didn't want to give anybody um, a certain ego boost by putting them on the on the programs. Oh, but. So who's playing today? So the match that's coming up now uh, is Wraith versus Enchantress Persephone. 
Yeah. Uh, those are good names. Uh, the other the other matches probably won't be taking place till much later, and they're still sorting out. Because it's all in the program, Nova, isn't it? Just ask. Yeah. It does, well, it has like the match. It, it says for the later ones, like to be determined. And you imagine that they sell more programs later on. I'll take ten programs. <laughs> ten programs? Yes, please. <laughs> no, not ten. Current, no, we don't want ten no, current we programs. Don't, no. No. We, but we give them to the rest of the group. Oh, well, that I mean, aren't here. Oh, well, uh, uh, well, that would be ten copper pieces, sir. Yes. Well, that's a silver piece, basically. Yes. Uh, okay. He, he like pulls out a stack and he's like, "Of course, sir. Happy to help." <laughs> Layers them all out. This thing's gonna be so excited. We could all flick through it later. <laughs> okay. Maybe we'll get he some says, signatures. He's like, and he kind of like eyes you, and he he takes the tickets back, and he gets you a new set of tickets. He's like, for buying extra programs, I've given you some good seats. Oh, oh thank, thank you. you. Like gives you a wink, and he's like, enjoy the show. So wait, his name is Wraith. The one of the yes, the duelist Wraith. Yes. That's his actual name. It's his spell clash name. They do that. That's of course. Yes, being being larger than life is a big part of spell clash. Wow. Um, you'll love this. Never. Yes. What shape is a silver piece? I haven't seen one before. Um, well, <laughs> show me what you are, discreetly. It's, it's not really a shape, it's just made of silver. <laughs> so it's just a coin. It's, it's, it's a silver coin, but it's probably got like, um, it would be a, I guess the money that you've mainly had so far would be gold. And platinums. Yeah, and also, but you've been getting changed I have been from getting changed, Savona. Because right? kind of... your gold and platinum is uh, marked with sky, with Gusthaven, Gusthaven markings. It's still accepted, but it's kind of like Scottish notes and English notes, right? Like they have the different colors. Um, all your silver pieces are Legal stamped thing. with, on one side is a um, crown, and on the other side is three female figures kind of stood next to each other. And that appears on all the Savonan coins. I've got six. Silver or five now. Five of those. Yeah. That's all you've got. Oh, this is this is a silver piece, is it? Yeah. Is this all you have? Yes. Wait. Total? What happened to all your gold and platinum? Well, we spent it all, didn't we? All? What did you spend? The, you had a hundred gold back. Did I? Yeah. After the Christmas. Oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pouch back here with all the goldies. Okay. If you lose any more money, that's it. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> that, once it's gone, it's gone. There it is. Okay. Is. So oh. these ones. Yeah. So the little, the little silver. You want one, one of these, sir? Little Good silvery. Sir. No, the little silvery one, not the gold. Yes, no, not yes. The... Oh yes, that was gold. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> this one okay. takes it. It's like okay, lunatics. <laughs> <laughs> he just like smiles and is like, yes, thank you, sir. Three forty. Well, Customer good. service. Yeah. <laughs> you would have taken the gold. Go to our seats. Um, let's go, let's go, let's go. So as you begin making your way down, you can see that the, the seats are all the kind of like stone seats um, enshrouded in a, in a semicircle around what you can see to be a large stone, maybe like 60 feet by 60 feet cube um, with a kind of shimmering wall of force all around the edges like a cube. Mm. Inside on the stone platform, you can see large rocks. There are kind of like fake trees, kind of like natural terrain has been sculpted around to kind of create this uh, visage of a battle. So field. Pokemon. Yeah. Mm. So is it a very Pokemon Stadium element to it. Oh, this yeah. kind of semicircle yes. thing with these tiered seats. So it is a large arena then? It's quite a large arena. It's okay. 60 feet for the main thing, and then you've probably got about another 30, 40 feet all around the edges of just oh, seating. Okay. Um, and you can see that overhead there are magical lights, kind of like your dancing lights, but they seem to be permanent, mm -hmm. which are shining down and kind of creating spotlights and kind of you know magical effects. You can and see there's flashing, almost like an aurora. There's waving around. Lots of different <laughs> colors. It spins around. Yeah, yeah all of that stuff. Oh. Um, and it's kind of, it's very over the top. Um, and inside, like, the same glowing runes all kind of run up the walls mm -hmm. and kind of spin down onto the other side. And all around, you can see different citizens of Cali's Rest. You can see merchants, you can see artisans that have brought their families. And, you know, the, the seats as they go further back, you imagine, are probably cheaper seats. Um, but your seats are quite near the front. They're not at the front. They're at a good position kind of in that midway range where you've got a good view of the whole arena. Is there any, like, tall Dragonborn or Goliath in front of us? Not in front of you, okay, no. Good. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, in fact, most of the people here are humans, dwarves, and then things like half-elves, a couple of halflings, that sort of thing. Nice. Um, it's mainly Savonan races you see around you. Uh, and it's not long after taking your seats that there is this kind of like deep booming voice that seems to be magically projected and kind of coming down from the ceiling, seemingly from nothing, as if a rope just appears out of nothing and then sliding down it is a very, very well-dressed halfling, ma uh, half-elf with slicked black hair, um, and he is holding some sort of like jewel encrusted wand, very much like a microphone. Um, <laughs> and he speaks into it, and he just is, 
Ladies and gentlemen, Kaylee's Rest, welcome to Spell Clash! And there's a big sort of like yeah, <laughs> cheering roar. Uh, um, uh, and Valor, you can see that Valor <laughs> is just amazed. She sat there like she doesn't know where to look, like she's just overwhelmed. Valor, did you see the she's just like, amazed out of nowhere? Like, oh, and she's just like eyes are like wide I going can't everywhere. Stop jittering. It's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> like the whole seat is vibrating. It's just like you can hit fear and it's just like <laughs> Are you ready to see a war of arcane phenomena? I'm so ready! Are you ready <laughs> in particular for a spell surging slaughter fest? What? 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 Eh? Slaughter. Slaughter. A uh, war? The crowd is just like, <laughs> like going crazy. They're all like stomping as well as so the entire it's like thing. Stomping, is. clapping. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can have that going if you want. Um, and he turns, he's like, our first competitor. The Necromancer, the Master of Darkness. Well, this would be Persephone. Ray! No, Ray, Ray, yeah. <laughs> and this kind of swirling black mist kind of appears on the platform, and very much like Reaper kind of teleporting in, this kind of cloaked figure with these oh big twin God. horns okay. uh, kind of appears. Music? This low kind of like, you know, uh, there's no music. There's no music. <laughs> there's this low like hood, and you can see this kind of like angled features kind of poking in, and, and this kind of figure with this curve. <laughs> Of scimitar kind of appears, um, and you just hear like the crowd roaring. People are booing, but people are also cheering, like a real kind of wrestling what vibe. An entrance! Mm. Wow. Going against him, the queen of beauty, the lady of enchantment, enchantress Persephone, and flying on a broom from the ceiling oh, comes wow. this woman with this long blonde hair, this very skimpy pink outfit, tall thigh high boots, long slender staff in one hand, comes zipping down onto the fan, and the crowd are cheering. There's loads of like men like throwing flowers and things, trying to get them near the arena. Um, and it's this big it's spectacle. The barrier. Yeah, it just literally <laughs> does. It just hits the barrier and slides down. And you can see that there are attendants like going around scooping up stuff that's thrown down. Um, Is there any way I can identify that flying spell? Um, yeah, you can make an arcana check. I want to see if it's fake. <laughs> I need some dice. 13. You will need some dice, Chris Trot, yes. <laughs> Uh, 13, you don't get the impression that it's fake, you think it is a magical oh, wow, effect, okay. but you're not sure if it's coming from her or if it's like an enchanted item. It I could see. be an enchanted um, star. I was just wondering if I could see like some wires holding her up, <laughs> <laughs> gliding her in. There's definitely a lot of magic going on. The same okay. way when he made his appearance, it was some sort of teleportation. So or if something. I use identify magic, I'm going to go blind. Uh, if you cast detect magic in here, there will be a lot of magic. Everything <laughs> is magic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> The match itself, it begins by having <laughs> two robed attendants come out and you can see that they're older than anybody else you've seen. They're probably in their like 50s, 60s, a man and a woman. They come out, silvery kind of beard, silver like, you know, graying hair. They come out and they're holding these ornate wands uh, that are made from purple kind of like metal and silver trimmings. And they go up to both of the two duelists, as they're called, um, and they begin weaving this ritual, which takes about 10 minutes. Um, during this time, the two duelists are doing the classic thing of like, Wraith is just like, I'm gonna destroy you. <laughs> it's like giving it all up. And Enchantress Persephone is like, I can't lose when my fans love me so much. And the crowd all cheers. No! Yeah. And they're playing up to the crowd, but it's actually kind of just to kill time whilst this ritual is being cast on them. As soon as it's finished, this barrier, which flickers for a moment and then turns invisible, of blue energy surrounds both of them. Um, and then they're both led to opposite ends of the, the battle arena itself. We can never be duelists. No. We don't have the pizzazz. That's we not can, so however. I mean, have you seen how you're dressed? Yeah. <laughs> you look just as flashy and gaudy as these guys. I don't have an entrance, though. You could think of one. Mm. I could get a broom. You all could. Lucas, like... one gold. I think Ray's going to win. I, do, I did find my gold pocket. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> all right. Three gold. Three. On what? I'm just upping the bet. I'm jittering a lot! So you think Persephone's <laughs> gonna win? The other one, yes. Okay, fine, three gold. Three gold. Okay. I bet Wraith. Yes, I, I bet the Enchantress. Nova. Hmm? This is all the group fun. It's great. <laughs> is it? I bet 300! <laughs> no, I'm just looking around, looking for a person selling uh, fried potatoes. You can, yep, it's, uh, it's about a copper. Yeah. Are they throwing them? For a like small portion. American no, it's baseball. like, it's kind of like, um, like a, a bag, like a little kind of uh, paper bag. Um, and it comes with, you know, fried potatoes in there, a little bit of sprinkling of salt, like rock salt on it. Okay. Oh. 
copper copper piece, yeah. if you want to lose. Uh, the match itself begins very, very quickly. Uh, you're kind of waiting, you expect some pomp, you expect some sort of signal, but really just the announcer kind of uh, leaves, the, leaves the cube, and then there is just a, Spell Duelists, begin! And then it just goes. Um, you watch as the Enchantress weaves some sort of spell over herself, and her form just speeds up and rapidly she moves around the battlefield. Seeming sensing it, uh, Wraith kind of waits for a moment, closes his eyes, and then teleports uh, a short distance away, just as an enormous lightning bolt scorches across the platform, smashing into the barrier, and you can hear this crackle of energy erupt. The <gasps> crowd just goes nuts um, as you see Wraith kind of <laughs> appear just out of the way. He turns around, and a thin beam of greenish energy strikes the Enchantress, despite her sped up form. Yay. You can see she's no! kind of like, she stumbles for a moment as the barrier begins kind of you can see some cracks kind of appearing. Wraith is just like, <laughs> you're not so fast after all, Persephone. Yes, she is! <laughs> Sorry. And then she, kind of, she just kind of like smirks. And you can see her form. You can definitely see that she's kind of poisoned or something. But then she smirks and she just looks back, clicks her fingers as Wraith's form like, Ugh! and she's just like, no, no, my dear Wraith. I was just waiting for you to get out of the way of that first spell so I could hold you in place. Um, and then you can no! see he's like, <laughs> and then she kind of brings her arms up and she's just, and these kind of four bolts of purple energy kind of bam, 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 slam magic into Wraith. Magic Missile Queen. Do, 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 do. Yeah, magic Missile strikes into his shield, sending a bunch of it kind of shattering. Um, he manages to kind of shake himself free, leap to the side, just in time before another lightning bolt across the map. Uh, he then throws his hands up. He's like, uh, you're making me mu use my special moves early, Persephone. Oh. That really pisses me off. Oh. Evard's black tentacles arise. What? As these black inky tendrils rot from the ground and begin smashing around Persephone. She's oh. trying to move, but one of them grips her arm and holds her in place. What sort and of you a can spell see is that? The, uh, the barrier begins breaking chunks of it, and it's you can see the whole thing is now very shattered. It looks very, very weak. She kind of like grunts and manages to summon enough energy to kind of pull her arm free and then teleport about 60 feet to the other side of the arena. Uh -huh. uh, Wraith turns around and you can see he's kind of breathing hard, a lot of his magical energy drained. Uh -oh. um, and she raises her hand up and she uh, raises it up. Let me introduce you to one of my own creation, Wraith. Chain Whip of Adoration! What? As this kind of golden lasso of, uh, of made of almost of like individual small hearts wraps around this kind of shadowy Aww. figure. And then she pulls it tight. He just clutches his mind as his shield no! <laughs> Amazing. Um, and then he's yanked to the ground, and he kind of is like, Ugh, uh, and then the crowd just begins cheering, Persephone, 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 Persephone. Um, oh. And uh, the announcer comes down, and this whole takes place, it's maybe like a couple of minutes at best, but the whole thing just flashes by in an instant. Um, the winner is crowned, and you can see that Persephone's hand is raised. Um, a bag of gold is brought out and handed to her. Oh. Wraith kind of slinks off uh, towards the entrance to the actual arena itself, and is not heard from again. Um, He's taken out back. <laughs> <laughs> wow, really bad. not heard from ever again. <laughs> oh, took out back and shot. And then the announcer <laughs> turns around, he's like, Ladies and gentlemen, we've got more exciting spell clash for you coming this evening. And don't forget, the Gold Throne Suvonan Tournament is underway. Anybody who's interested in signing up should go and speak with Daphne out of the front desk. Any potential mages, potential spell clash winners out there, make oh, sure you oh, sign oh. up. I'm just gonna hold up. Like, I mean, <laughs> yeah, like you hold Lucius's hand up, but there's a bunch of others like kind of like, yeah, raising their hands. <laughs> um, and then he just kind of gestures back towards I'm not a mage, I'm a sorcerer. So. <laughs> you totally got this! You can totally do this! Smash everyone! Do so it! That level of, like, the, what we just watched, that level, is that anything, is that way beyond anything we've ever done? Mm, make an arcana check. The tentacle. What? <laughs> the strangest roll I've ever done. Uh, seven. Yeah, you're not really sure. Like, there's certainly some magic you recognize. The um, magical missile, like, yeah. you kind of picked up on that one. Um, but there's definitely some powerful magic being thrown. How much more powerful? You don't know. Okay. Um, mm. I mean, it was it was very powerful. And Valor's just like, wow, that was ins that was crazy. You're oh, gonna no. sign up, right, Lucius? No, I'm terrified. Well, you have to. Why? What about no Nova Quill? You should sign up too. Well, I mean, Will you I... cast spells. Am I nothing like that? Well, you cast spells, right? I've I seen you cast use spells. I'm sword, though. Yeah, but that shoots magic, right? Yes. Well, then I don't see why you couldn't. I mean, it's I a magical have to sword. Check. But I didn't see anyone using swords down there, so True. I'd have to double check if weapons are. Wraith had one, but he never used it. Right. Okay. He had this like curved scimitar. Curved swords. I still stand. Yeah. 
by my yeah. thing that I didn't see a weapon being used. Okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> fine. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I found this very I suppose we can go speak to the Daphne person and, and find out more at least. See what power is required. Hmm. Sure. I mean, if we ever go against Persephone though, we're done. There's got to be top tier, right? I There's got to be some lower tiers that we can uh, There's this very kind of like bearded fellow who's like, top tier? <laughs> Not quite, friend. They're kind of average level spell duelists. They're average. The people up in Gold Throne are much more powerful. Really? Yeah. You don't stand a chance, Quill. What? Oh, yeah. Hey. Or Nova. Yeah, I guess you could make a, an entry level, I suppose. <laughs> so many young hopefuls entering the sport. It's good to see. I appreciate you calling me young. Yes. You are young. Huh? This guy looks to be about 50. So <laughs> it's like, thank you. Excellent. I'm glad that my beloved Persephone won. You were a fool to bet against her, Birdman. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, how much true. was it again? That's uh, three gold. Three gold. Put it in the fund. Okay, <laughs> fine. There you go. Three gold for the fund. Okay. okay. Do I add three? I'll add three. So while you guys are doing that, Ayla and Sentry, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you guys had really? just left the Shrine of Zephyr. Um, the rain is still beating down, and whilst there is no more thunder and lightning, the storm is still kind of in place. You're kind of getting the tail ends of it, the heavy winds, the dark storm clouds, and the rain. Um, Ayla, I think you're still wounded, aren't you? You weren't fully healed up. I'm at like half health. So you've got some bruises, and you can feel your muscles half. sore and aching. Because you healed me quite a bit. But that vision, of the lightning and the clouds taking that form still kind of fills your head. It's still very fresh in your memory, this feeling of immense power just gripping you, like being almost helpless, like a, like a child in the hands of a parent who could just crush and you wouldn't be anymore. You kind of have this very, very strong feeling that you, you touched with a being beyond your comprehension. Um, Sentry, Kalu is kind of, uh, Kalu Otama, this orc, uh, covered in tattoos. He's still shirtless, um, but he's kind of got his uh, large pike over one shoulder. Um, and he's kind of like leading you on down this very, very muddy track where the rain has just turned this road into thick slurry like mud. And it's clinging to your boots and you're kind of having to like really like pull your boot, pull your boots as you make each step. Um, and he's leading you down East Street, which is a the more worn street in Cali's Rest, and it leads to the east of Suvona. Um, and you can see that it's mainly kind of like lower income artisans and houses and stuff like that. And he's just like, this way, it's not too far now. How are you feeling? Are you okay? I mean, I've been better, but um, that was, uh, I don't know. I have very mixed feelings, Sentry. One hand, badass. Other hand, ow. Yeah, very out. Um, that was terrifying. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't know what to do. Um, but I'm, I'm glad you're okay, and I'm glad everything this... turned out okay. I think. I kind of have a lot of things. I don't know. How long was I out for? I, no. I had some visions, and there's. You weren't out long. Okay. He kind of turns back. He's just like, a few moments, perhaps. I was watching you, just in case. What did you see? Zephyr. <laughs> he just chuckles deep to himself and then turns back and carries on. So you, you, saw, you saw the goddess? Yeah, I spoke to her. I, d I, uh, I don't really know, but apparently there's someone in the city that kind of might have similar powers. But fire powers? Interesting. He said they would be at the Abbey. We should definitely go and investigate. I mean, how, do you feel any closer to knowing more about yourself? Um, well, I know for sure that it's definitely the, the Lair de Lan. I've heard this twice now. It's a, a group of clans. I just don't know which one is mine still. Kali talks as he's kind of still walking. It's like, Zephyr is not one to just give you all the answers straight away. Mm. Excellent. Is audio still going? Audio's still going, so we can keep, keep going for the okay. podcast and stuff. Um, <clears throat> Zephyr does not just give out easy answers. She will give you what you need to begin the journey. She'll give you a hint in the right direction, but that's it. It's definitely more of a hint than I had before, so... Yeah. Top notch so far. I suspect if 
she spoke to you, then there must be a deep connection there. She is not the type to speak to just anyone. There must be something about you or this mission that you have that is important to this storm chaser. So, I suspect that if you continue down this path, you'll cross paths with her again. He kind of smiles and this big tusk kind of like sticks out of his half-cocked grin. Well, I hope it's less painful next time, though I kind of doubt that. Well, that depends. The Storm Chaser is fickle. I can't promise you that it will be safe, for certain. Nothing in life that is worth doing is ever safe. <laughs> True. Anyway, we're here, and he gestures to this kind of run-down bar. Um, it's got like a little sign out of it which holds like a chalice, like a little magical chalice uh, with a wand. And it's called, in text, it has the Magician's Cup. Um, this place would not normally be where I go, but it's got some interesting characters, which I like to feel uh, livens up the place. Do guardians drink? And he kind of turns to you. Wirecast is gone again. Oh, I can... Christ. <laughs> well, I can appear to drink if it makes you feel more comfortable. I don't uh, need to. No, it's uh, not for my comfort. This place does have a few surprises, uh, but, I mean, I'm a sailor. I like to drink. <laughs> but do not feel that you need to keep pace with me. Does it have a warm fire? I suspect within stormy nights like this. Well, then Sounds perfect. Fine. All right. And then perhaps you and I should speak more, Ela of the Laird Alarm. Yeah, I think we should. And then he leads you inside. You're kind of met by this strong smell of sweat and kind of three-day-old beer that kind of just mingles mm. in the air together. Mm. The floor is covered with a thick straw to kind of soak up uh, like mud and rain, um, but there is hard flooring underneath it. It looks like the straw has been recently kind of like spread out. Uh, there is a fire, not large, but warm, uh, a stone fire, around which there is at least one very grubby looking artisan who's kind of like sat in front of it holding like a clay mug, just nursing a beer. Uh, there is a long bar of wood behind which a very kind of surly looking dwarf with very rough looking hair and a rough looking beard in a very loose uh, tunic and vest is kind of polishing some ceramic cups. And then you can see a vague human shape at the end of the bar that's just slumped over it, passed out dead cold. Um, and he's kind of, you notice him because his hair is a very stark white. Um, and it's just this long white hair and you can just see this kind of like bundled out over this kind of like loose tunic and cloak and he's just passed out on the bar itself. Uh, and Kalu is like, ha ha ha, oh, this place reminds me of uh, many good memories. Oh. Yeah, it's cool, Steve. Yeah, we know. Uh, <laughs> if you, I don't know if there's anything we can do. Do we need to like restart the stream or anything or? Okay, should we uh, try and take a break? Because I feel like it's going to be more irritating if we take a break now, or less irritating if we take a break now yeah, and get it fixed. Okay, so for those of you watching on Twitch, podcast listeners, this won't affect you. Mm. Uh, but, but for those of you watching on Twitch, because of these issues, we're going to try and take a break and get it fixed now um, so we can continue playing properly. So sorry about this, guys. Uh, technical problems, but we'll try and get it fixed, and we'll see you in a few minutes. See ya.
hopefully we're back and it's gonna stay back now. Uh, yeah. Hey, welcome back. Sorry we had to take an early break. So uh, Steve's had a look. We hope that we fixed it. Yeah. We're gonna have to see. Um, if not, we're just gonna carry on for the podcast. Um, so hopefully you'll stick with us uh, for this cool episode. Uh, Chris Trott, do you have something about fan art? Hope you enjoyed that fan art video. That was a really good video. I like that video and all the fan art in it. And I we like all do too. Yeah. yeah. So if you'd like that to appear, if you'd like your art to appear in the video for next time, please email it to highrollersdnd at gmail.com. I will not be pulling it from social media or your personal tumblers or anything like that because we need your consent to be able to use it yeah. on yeah. YouTube. So thank you in advance. And if there's any good ones out there, prod them to send it in an email. Yes. Thank you. Please do. Also, do link it on social media anyway, because we want to retweet Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. So Big send it everywhere. Fun. Yeah. Post it everywhere. Yeah. Right. Uh, we're also eating cake for our third birthday celebration. Thank you, Katie and oh, Rhiannon and Kim and all that for sorting it all out. I didn't uh, sort it out this year. It was oh, you didn't sort it out. Okay. Rihanna got the cake, <laughs> Katie got the decorations and the hats. So big thank you to you guys. Yeah. Love right, let's crack on with yeah. the game. Um, you guys have entered the pub whilst Katie is eating. Feel free to... <coughs> Bless Excuse thou. Me. I'm again. <laughs> I can continue. You can continue? Okay. So, the uh, bar before you, the Magician's Cup. Mm -hmm. uh, you are led inside by, by Kalu Otoma, this kind of dark green to almost grey skinned orc with tattoos and dreadlocks. Um, he's still not wearing a shirt, he's just got like leather trousers and big heavy boots um, carrying this large shirt. pike. Uh, he does have like a rucksack, like almost like a satchel bag. Um, thrown over one shoulder um, that seems to, you know, probably contain the rest of his belongings, including clothes. Um, he, like, leans in, he's just like, ah, reminds me of, uh, well, other things. And he points to the dwarf, my good man, some drinks. And he just kind of, like, nods, seems to have, like, a glint of recognition with the orc, and then just starts pouring out some kind of thick-looking liquid. <laughs> just mm. What is it, like... Grog. <laughs> it, 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 if, if any of you had any experience in sailing, uh, you would recognize it as a very grog-like drink. Um, it's a very thick kind of rum-like uh, smell. Oh, I'd recognize it. Yeah? I've got, pref well, water vehicles apparently. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so it probably makes sense that at some point in his life, maybe he's part of the Messenger Guild training quill, learned to at least drink to rock. Well, not drink it, it's but like a hazing. you met sailors <laughs> and a few other folks and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, uh, he leads you over to the bar and sits down for a drink. Um, and yeah, what do you guys want to do? Like, there is a fire if you want to go and warm yourself by it. I do. Um, we should bring the Lucius here. It would be hilarious. Yeah, this 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 would. I could imagine him here. Mm -hmm. It would be a good time for everybody. The straw-coloured floor yeah. and the, the yeah. very <laughs> odious, the odious stench of the locals. He'd um, definitely fit right in. Definitely wouldn't yes. get mugged. <laughs> Oh, and Kalo just kind of like takes a long drink, puts it down. Ah, that's the good stuff. So how long have you been in Kelly's rest? Are you passing through? Oh, not long, not long. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, I've not been here too long. I don't normally travel this far inland, uh, but recent uh, situation caused me to take a bit of time, explore the world a little. Thought I'd head inland, it's been a long time. And uh, perhaps there was a little element of the storm chaser guiding me here, probably to meet you. Oh really? So you think <coughs> that those kind of things she has control over? No, not control over the things, but uh, being a tide watcher, it's our job to watch the seas and the weather for signs of things. And generally, well, Let's just say that I believe that there's a lot in this world and in this life that is meant to be. And you have to be sensitive to these things. Callie's rest was just another place to go, but clearly there was something good has come of it. Fair. I can feel storms coming now since, since this power. Mm. He just like nods. He's just like very common amongst those who are favored by Zephyr. She doesn't necessarily grant this as a way to avoid them, but so you know where they are if you do wish to go find one. And he kind of just grins, half lopsided grin. But anyway, my tale is, uh, is a different one. I'm not here by choice, whereas you have come seeking something here. Not here specifically, I would say. We had a bit of a, an unfortunate incident that landed <laughs> us here. 
I know that feeling very well. And you travel with the Guardian, I see. The Guardian and a few other companions. Hmm. And you have had much trouble here in Suvona? They're not fond of my type here. They're not fond of anybody that isn't from Suvona. I've had a few scrapes and troubles myself. You mentioned something about Zephyr talking to you about the Abbey. Apparently there's a, another wild elf. Who's okay. there? Goes quiet a little bit. You should be careful. The worshippers of Palador here are very zealous in their beliefs. I've yes. had a little bit of trouble with them myself. They do not like a, a heretic wandering around. We've had we... our fair share of people thinking differently of us. Mm. We did see that when we came into the town. Oh, the, the at the entrance? There. That is that is them putting on a good face for travelers. Spend a few more days here and I'm sure that they'll come looking. Just be aware, they're not to be trusted. Don't trust anyone. Smart. Although you did let me try and nearly beat you to death, so perhaps don't do that in the future. I mean, that was a fight. That's not exactly... <laughs> True. Trust. True. <laughs> and what are your I plans? Feel like, I feel like we've proven it ourselves to each other and I. Oh, certainly. I've proven that if I needed to, I could kill you, but I have no need to. Let's not go down that. That's fine. That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> not quite so easy to rile up like the rest of your brethren, I see. I've had a few scraps with wild doves in my time as well. But anyway, what, uh, what are your plans now? I'd like to see if I can get close to that, Abby. Do you know any good way around trying to find someone within it? Any? No, it's fortified. It's a separate building. I try and avoid it as best as I can. Like I said, they don't like me or my, my lady, so I don't try and stick around there. What about you, Guardian? Um... No, I might, might maybe try and find the others, see what they're up to, but... You're a traveling companion. Yes. Mm. Um, but then, I don't want to stick by Ayla as well. I think we'll explore a little bit more. I'm well, interested. Well, the city has a lot to offer. They said something about Spell Clash. Oh, that is oh. true. They did say about Spell Clash. It did sound interesting. <laughs> he kind of, like, laughs. Spell Clash. Uh, you don't want to say that too loud around that one. And he points at the guy sprawled out on the bar. Oh, uh, really? Uh, when he gets too deep into his cups, he rants and raves about it. I'm sick of hearing about his whining. And then you just hear this like, <laughs> from the half drunk man. Oh, really? Is he, does he participate then when he's not here? From what his drunken ramblings I've overheard, he used to, but he doesn't anymore. Interesting. Oh. Well... I'm not going to compete. I'm just going to kind of... I'm, I'm curious to see if some of our companions will, though. Yeah, mm -hmm. I feel like some of them might do. As you say that, we'll jump back to the others. Okay. <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, so, for those of you who are at the Spell Clash Arena... I don't think we Hedrick, should take part. There's no <laughs> way we can compete with, uh, with, with Persephone. So, you're making your way towards the kind of ticket entrance where you kind of entered and where the commentator, you know, mentioned that any aspirant should head over. And Val is kind of like tugging on like your sleeve and all that. It's like, no, come on, you have to. Yeah. That looks so cool. It looks Valor. cool. It's dangerous. You no, you're saying you're protected by the shields. You saw the shields. It didn't look dangerous. It looked painful, but it didn't look dangerous. But you guys have fought stuff before, right? Well, it's less... I mean, the, there's no risk here. Well, it's, it's less the fighting itself and more the crippling anxiety that I'd face afterwards and during the, the fight itself with so many people watching. You just don't pretend that they they're Think of the reputation of the Elanaster. Sorry, sorry, Val, I'm, I shouldn't have uh, stepped above my normal volume for that, but <laughs> yes. Well, just don't pretend that they're not there. And use a different don't name. Don't pretend. They're no, not there. Pretend that they're not there. And use a different name. Come up with a stage name. Yeah, like, you know, he was called Wraith and he was all dark and mysterious. Yeah, I doubt yeah. that's his actual name. I doubt he signs letters as Wraith. Yes, it could be like... Uh, uh, Jerome. <laughs> yes, Jerome. <laughs> Well, no, something to do with colours. That's that's your whole thing. Rainbow. Color, color man, rainbow. Uh, uh, well, painbow. 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 Well, that that sounds like I'm gonna hurt somebody. Well, that's that the point. That doesn't sound like very Lucius. What about the um the ghost lady called you like the prince, right? You could be called like the prince or something. Prince of color. Of pain. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't like. Well, maybe that could be <laughs> maybe your name. Your could be your name. Huh? <laughs> I don't. Be, am I doing it? You could be 
Um, the the blue pain or no? no. Uh, the blue meanie. <laughs> no. Supernova. <gasps> yes. Supernova. supernova. Well, here's the thing. What's a supernova? It's just a super version of Nova. Woo! Yeah. I flex. <laughs> really badly because I got twig arms. So as you as you guys are having this conversation, <laughs> you do see. you <laughs> see um, a young woman, slightly kind of masculine features, but you know dressed in like a long skirt, kind of like little blouse, long hair, um, with glasses. She kind of looks over. She's like, "Excuse me, are uh, are you discussing entering?" Uh, well, uh, well, no, actually. Oh, well, sorry. fantasizing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, of course. And she kind of nods. Well, we, we, and we goes we, back to several books. I mean, we saw. And, and, are you Miss Daphne? She kind of looks up. She's like, uh, "Yes, I am. I'm Daphne Go uh, Goodcroft. I'm the um, I'm the Arcanist's assistant." Hi, pleased to meet you. Stick up my hand. Hey, hello, and she Don't kind shake. of like takes it, and yeah, she kind of like shakes your hand. I mean, is there like an entry level? Well, tournament? yes, of course. I mean, not uh, it's not an entry level tournament, but oh. I mean, obviously, we don't match you up against um, people that are beyond skill capability. Also, it's not really just a sign up and you get to do it thing. There are certain elements that you need to work through first. Oh, do tell. Uh, well, I get okay. My notebook out. <laughs> she uh, she gets her little kind of book out as well and starts going over things. Well, you know, it's not just you can't just sign up. There is um, several things. So first things first, you need to complete a license registration form to get your spell clash license. I'm good at forms. Um, uh, that you includes that. a waiver of liability uh, in case you are injured. Uh, your spell clash won't be held accountable. You can read uh, that. You will also need to pay the 100 gold yearly fee yeah, you uh, can do per that. per applicant. Yeah, um, and then you will also need to get approval from a sanctioned spell clash referee or um, a mage manager who adju adjudicates you. Uh -huh. Where would you find one of those? Uh, well, um, there's only really two in Cali's Rest. A lot of them have left uh, recently, uh, actually. Um, let me think. You have... Left. Yes, a few of them decided to move back to Gold Throne. A couple of them came out here to manage smaller mages, smaller duelists, but they've left since. Um, the only ones I can think of really is uh, there's Torgan Emma Down. He's the um, he works for Clash of the Champions, which is a spell clash recruitment company. Um, he operates in one of the small buildings just outside the dome. I mean, Torgan's really the only reliable. One. I mean, there is Gideon, but I, well, he's a bit of a. Um, Gideon Golden Touched, uh, he's here in Callie's Rest. I think he frequents a bar somewhere. Um, he used to be a duelist himself, but he's, he's uh, technically, he still has his, his referee and, and management um, like license. Like his surname, Golden Touch. Yeah. Everything he touches. You've not heard of Gideon Very Golden impactful. Touch? No. Do you know anything about Spell Clash? No! no not at all. We watched our first <laughs> game just now. And you want to sign up? Yes. Okay. Well, yeah. potentially. Do you have any experience using magic in dangerous situations? I've bought some cows, yes. We've, yes. <laughs> we've just battled our way through the lowlands. Uh, we don't put it that way. It's That sounds like we've been murdering. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, and Valor's like, no, we stopped murderers, Quill. That's yes. what we've done. We've stopped we've murderers. Stopped. Yeah. Yes, we pursued. By murdering them. Yes. We fought a wyvern. Mm. <laughs> You can see it like looking over towards like some of the guards, like you know oh, the good. you know the guardians that protect uh, Kelly's rest. No, I don't we really leave here. Tracker and scout. Well, what? there are protectors of this town, okay. and we helped them fight a uh, wyvern. We fought a wyvern. All right. Well, look, I mean, so you're saying you have experience with combat with spells? Yes. I mean, well, short answer, yes. Okay. Well, I mean, I, <laughs> I suppose normally the people that register to be spell class duelists are fans of the sport. So they. We I are fans. We are fans. definitely Converts. fans. I love the enchantress. We've just seen like our first She's match. She's my favorite. Sign us up. Very uh, disappointed at the Ray Do you have enchantress <laughs> merchandise? I saw yes. people had signs. People make their own signs. No, we don't sell. The, the individual duelists might sell things, but uh, it's gaudy. And, and she looks at you like the enchantress. Really? She just um, won. She won. Uh, yes, yeah, she's an insufferable bitch. Wow! <laughs> Language! Poor Wraith. He puts on this bad guy character. I told him it wasn't a good idea. It's a shame this isn't word clash. Uh, I would win would've... that! <laughs> I could do that. I'm sorry it was it's a bad joke. You. <laughs> well, listen, I mean, if you want to apply, I have the forms here and, and you, there are opportunities in the town. Um, you will also, once you have everything completed, you will then participate in a, your um, preliminary match. It's a match to make sure you're suitable right. for Spell Clash. 
Okay. Um, not a lot of people never complete them or they're turned off because it is quite scary. Um, and you need you are Maybe required to complete one before you can enter a tournament, an official tournament. Right. And you, you have the protected barrier at that point, right? Yes, of course, yes. All spell class matches are taking place in the arena and you will have the spell class shield. Okay. Can Hex like warlocks compete? You've said many things. I don't know what uh, what? So I can do magic, right, but a then... lot of it is channeled through my sword and when I hold ah, up my dagger. I see. Oh I see, I see. Well that's very well. Um, yes, we have a few entrants who make use of uh, enchanted objects um, rather than their own natural spell casting abilities. Um, the general rule of uh, thumb uh, that goes is you are generally, if it is a magically enchanted weapon or some sort of conjured device or some such thing, uh, generally their effects will hit the shield. Um, a normal mundane weapon will go through it, and if you do injure a spellcast duelist, you are inherently disqualified. Um, any harm done to a spellcast duelist beyond the shield is results in disqualification. Uh, so yes, I suppose if you have some sort of enchanted knife, you are you can enter. You will be at a severe disadvantage, of course. I mean, it's not really a knife; it's a sword, but it just turned into a knife. Mm. Very well. Yes, I suppose. I don't know. Excuse me. Does um, healing magic does it rejuvenate the shield? Oh, well, that's actually quite an intelligent question. Um, <laughs> yeah, she kind of looks surprised. Uh, well, no, <laughs> healing, healing magic it's specifically, no. However, um, any spellcaster who has... Um, you are a spellcaster yourself. You are familiar that you have tiers of magic. Uh, you can... different LNG levels within you. Uh -huh. Yes, Daddy taught me all of that when he signed so me up. So you may expend a certain level of energy normally required to cast a spell to rejuvenate the shield by a certain amount. Um, healing magic is not required. Any spellcaster can do this. Hmm. It's just most of my spells are healing. Um, so are you some sort of priest? Yeah, I suppose. I mean, no, but... I mean, I, we don't get a lot of priests that take part, but there are some that do. I've got, a, I've got offensive spells. Well, then, yes. The I mean, objective of spell clash is to destroy the opponent's shield, so any, any spell that can cause harm um, will generally suffice. Okay. Oh, I was just making sure. But it's also, if you think that Spell Clash is just about casting magical missiles or doing damage, then it's you've not. got the wrong idea. Um, that's, all, that's pretty much all tactical. they did. That's all Persephone well, did, and she won. Then you clearly weren't watching. Did you not see her? She attempted to restrain her foe that, so that he did not have the opportunity to dodge. They used their movement, teleportation, to get around the battlefield, made use of cover. It's very clever. It's very clever. Is She's she... great, Persephone. Hmm. Well, are you interested or not? What was the name of the other sponsor apart from Gideon? Torgan Emmerdown. He belongs to Clash of the Champions. They're an official spell class recruitment company. Uh, generally, they work in that they provide um, facilities for training, equipment. They assist you with uh, the application process, um, and then they take a cut of your winnings. Uh, it... Winnings? Yes, of course. Why do you think people do this? There is winnings and fun. acclaim. Oh no, no, no! It's no people don't do this for fun. This is, a, this is a sport. I see. And what sort There's of... There's a significant um, amount of gold involved in Spell Clash. A significant amount? Well, your preliminary matches, um, you are simply paid... Uh, you, there is no payment for your preliminary matches. But the tournaments, there will be grand prizes. Huh. Uh, the tournament hopping Gold Throne, um, the, uh, the, the Siaskin Cup, um, I believe that the grand prize is 10,000 gold. Mm. That's a remarkable amount of money. And how much does a sponsor normally yes, take? I got it. Clash of the Champions, Ew. well, I mean, I've never inquired, but I've heard the rumours. 70, 80%? 70, 80? Yes, they do claim that, uh, you know, they provide accommodations, they provide food, equipment, that sort of thing. It's, I'll be quite honest with you, it seems like a bit of a scam to me. Um, but you... plenty of young mages sign up willy-nilly. That's their choice, I suppose. Some of us aren't blessed with the abilities to enter Spell Clash, so... I don't mean to sound like I'm rushing, but what? how long does it take to get inducted? Well... It sounds like there's a lot of steps, and we, we've got things to do. Generally, we try and only host preliminary, preliminary matches. We'll schedule them all for once a week. But, I mean, you're fortunate that... Uh, I mean, we are hosting some preliminary matches tomorrow night. Oh, um, you are. You could jump if you can get the applications and complete your forms and payment in time. I can make sure that you're entered into that. We only have a few sign-ups. Here's a hundred gold. Well, she kind of is like takes the bag <laughs> of the coin, slides you a form. Complete this form, but, please. Uh, sorry, would you mind if you gave the bag back? It's just 
I'm going to do the Sylvie's. <laughs> Pours it out into like a little box and then she's about. Really it. sorry, I usually I wouldn't do that. But. Um, yes, well, there is your application form. You'll find Quill and Ink just at the end there. Um, Quill's right there. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. It's a joke. Oh, very good, I get that. Thank one. you. <laughs> Hello, sorry. <laughs> Didn't find that funny. That's all right. Oh, for context, my name is Quill. That would have been useful to know, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Your writing implement and ink is at the end. Thank Complete you the so application much. form. Um, and then once it comes back to me, I will, well, I'll give it back and you'll need to get it stamped and signed by an approved person. Just to make it clear, we have magical methods of detecting their arcane mark. So don't try and forge it. Why would we? Why, we don't need to do Plenty it. of people try and cheat their way into Spellclash. It's... So, oh, I see. To sell the... fake affidavits and yes, the referral. And no one succeeds. Okay. If they did, Spell Clash has invested a lot of uh, research and time into developing the arena and how it all works. We wouldn't go just allowing anybody to hand these out. Hmm. Well, clearly, if they had succeeded, she wouldn't know about it. It's true. Okay. Thank you, <laughs> Daphne. Very kind. <clears throat> If you want to find uh, Gideon, I believe he frequents a bar called the, Ma the Magician's Cup. It's on East Street. I mean, it sounds like that's the place to go. I don't want eighty percent of the share to to to, to, to Torg and Emma down. That's ridiculous. I wish my brother was here. Your brother? You have a yeah. brother now. You have a brother. <laughs> I talk about my brother a lot. You've spoken about him, I think, once. And my sister. Si I don't remember the system. I might have mentioned that one. <laughs> I think that's new. Never listen. <laughs> I mean, you say a lot of I'm things. I'm sure I've mentioned my brother before. He's a sky jouster. If you're quite done, would you mind having your personal conversations elsewhere <laughs> to work? Also, is it just the one form? Well, I mean, with respect, you came to us. No, I'm... She's sitting <laughs> at the desk and out to you. I think we were just talking really loudly. Okay. <laughs> she just gestures to a desk. <laughs> We were oh, no, just you're really right. loudly, like, <laughs> standing. I probably uh, dropped some crumbs on it. <laughs> Valor, like, like, pokes both of you. It's like, you guys should apply as well. A hundred gold? Yeah. That's a lot. Oh, my. Go on. Nova, do it. I think you should do it. Nova at least. Arvil will pay you back. I'll make Arvil pay you back when we get to Arvil. It would be really good. Maybe they have this in... Daphne? Yes. Do they only have one-on-ones, or do they have like team-based? No, no, it's, it's one-on-one. Oh, no, that was, think about that, like you a trio. You should consider teaming up, because then, you know, that's a new kind of like spectatorship. and like, There may be tournaments in the audience. future, but for now, it, it remains one-on-one. -on -one. It's difficult to manage more than two spell class shields at the same time oh, I see. in the arena. Fair enough. Is there a second place prize? For the grand tournament? Oh, yes, of course. Second and third. And third. Mm -hmm. If three of us compete and we come first, second and third, that's yeah. a lot of money. I believe that would be, I think it's 5,000 for second and about two, 3,000 for third. Wow. And the statistical probability of that? <laughs> of you winning? <laughs> <laughs> she just genuinely like... <laughs> well, all right, I'll entertain the idea. Well, first things first, you should be aware of how the tournament in Girlthrone works. <clears throat> you don't just get to enter it, you see. There's only 16 places. Oh. It's taking place in about seven to eight days from now. Once you've completed your preliminary matches, if you sign up for the tournament, you'll each be given a moat of Siaska. It's a small gemstone and she holds one up. Mm. Using these, you can wager them with other spell clash duelists. You can do it in Gold Throne here or anywhere along the way. Whoever has the most, once you get to Gold Throne, you simply turn in however moats you have and we'll take the top 16 spell clash duelists who have the most. So the likelihood that you'll even get in the tournament is, is interesting and depends on how good you are. So we need to right. collect Badges. I mean moats. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> but, hang, wait. From different gyms? Sorry. No, no, you can <laughs> fight other duelists. Okay. We find them. Yes. Along the way. And we just fight them in the middle of nowhere? No, no, you'll need to do it in, in a spell clash arena. Right, okay. Um, but I believe that there's one here, there is one in, um, along the way, there's one in Silverbrook, and then there's obviously the largest in Gold Throne. There's a several in Gold Throne, in fact. Oh. And how many other, um, uh, registrars, are there? Oh, plenty across Savona. There's uh, hundreds. Hundred, hundreds? This has become the most popular sport in the lowlands, not just in Savona. I've heard that it's beginning to take root in other continents as well. Oh. Is sky jousting a thing here? No. I've now that heard. is a sport. Is that mm. a sky city thing? Oh, yes, absolutely, yeah. Oh, oh clearly been. not. I've never been. You've never been? Oh, you'd love it. 
I don't know if she would. She doesn't mm. love anything. No. But anyway, thank you. I love spell cash. <laughs> <laughs> I hope she didn't hear that. <laughs> I'll take the forms, two of them. Two? Three? Uh, four. Four? Who I else have we got that can come What if Ayla or Sentry or Valor? Like a big grin on her face. <laughs> What's the Is there youngest? An age limit? Yeah. She's like, there is an age limit. How old are you, young miss? And she, that was like, eight, six, 19. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a deception Let's check for Valor. <laughs> Purple for Valor. Oh no. <laughs> and what <laughs> what year? Every year. She's <laughs> <laughs> like, no, my dear, I'm afraid you're a little too young. There are certain limitations. Aww. I'm three. Well, if you want three, there will be another 200 gold. No, I mean, I am. No, he is three. You are clearly of a, of a you, I'm assuming that for your race, that is a suitable age. Oh, well, yes, but there you go. for her race. She, you mean a human like me? Beast yeah, Walker. No, she, she's a Beast, beast Walker. walker. <laughs> <laughs> You're quite done making a mockery <laughs> of me. <laughs> Bella, are you taking any extra forms or not? Yeah, we'll take Quill, her. do you want to enter? You never know. We'll take six. No, no, we can't. <laughs> you never do. We could no, find somebody. Have we're not going to gold. We're not gaining you any allies anytime right soon. Now, oh, you have to pay for it to get the form. It's three. Well, you basically. You, so don't you don't get the form you, and then you, pay you, later. Yeah, you can when you fully complete your license, then you pay the hundred gold. Lucius has just decided to pay it now. Oh, fine. Well, t- can we just take two forms and then pay you later? <sighs> she hands you the two forms. Thank you. Once you have it signed, then we'll complete the license. Thank you, Miss Daphne. It's Goodcroft, technically. Let me just write that down then. Daphne Goodcroft. Good <coughs> Croft. Thank well, you. If you're quite done, I'm very busy. Clearly. We won't take up I look around more. at the crowd. <laughs> like, is there anyone else lining up? She's really, she, there's not really anybody lining up, but you can see that there are several stacks of books. Quill, with your perception, you notice that there is a some sort of like spell clash magazine in between the oh. pages. What was like someone posing on the front of it? <laughs> <laughs> She's reading that rather that than the books. No. <laughs> Um, okay, so yeah, you guys can grab that. <laughs> Let's head to the magician's, magician's cap. Okay. For, for Gideon. For Gideon. Gold it doesn't take you guys very long navigating through the city streets. Um, you arrive on East Street. Uh, it is a very, very muddy track. Uh, Lucius, walking on the street, your boots and trousers are just caked. You're um, in a white outfit as well, aren't you? Yes, I am. <laughs> well, his cloak is white and his hat is white, but his night not... cloak. I suppose, yeah, you've got night frost now. Night frost. Uh... Yeah. Um, <coughs> night frost doesn't really have a hood, though. It's more like a big scarf. How is night frost? He's been quiet. Okay. He hasn't said anything recently. Um, certainly, the um, I would imagine that the fight in the spell clash arena, like he just kind of was a bit much. Yeah. Uh, but you make your way there, covered in mud. Um, and eventually you come across this same building. After asking for directions, you find this kind of worn sign of a cup with a wand and then the magician's cup. Um, Ayla and Sentry, what have you been up to for the last, I don't know, probably say 10, 15 minutes? Because a lot of this was happening alongside of each other. I think Ayla's just trying to find out as much <coughs> about, I guess, anything to do with Zephyr because this okay. guy has been worshipping Zephyr his whole life and yeah. she's very new to that idea, but wants to find out as much information as she can. Hmm, yes. So, let me bring up some information on Zephyr for you, which is, annoyingly, I have to go into a bunch of stuff. Do, do, do. Get the old full campaign document out here. (gasps) Wait, that's the one that you sent us? Uh, It does, but But I'll just read it to you now, because then the audience will know about it. Mm. Oh, I've got it on my own. Laura Dub. I've got it in my Kindle app. Lore. Lore. Trying, trying to think of what Quill's name could be. Annoyingly, I can't look up my... Um, I've got it here. Do you have the Sophia information? Yes. Dead go. eye. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Are you trying to think up your name? <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking that as well. <laughs> Mark, do you want it? Okay. Spectrum would be good for you. Uh, yeah. It would save me some time. Spectrum. Oh no, I've got it here. I've got it now. I've got it. That's good. I've got it now. I like it. I'm going to pass it to Katie so that Katie can read, but I'm going to read some of it out. It's mid paragraph. So. (laughs) 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 Fucking. Callow. (laughs) 
looks at you, he's like, so, Zephyr, she's always been the troublesome daughter of Siaska. Whilst the other gods worked with their mother to build Erois, Zephyr was playing in the oceans that she made. She was diving into their deepest parts, exploring the caves that Atelicus and the others made. She is a curious girl, a curious woman, who likes to find hidden things, and she has a great love of adventure and treasure. And it was, she created my people, the orcs, and she instilled a lot of that into us. We call her the great sister. She looks after us, and with her we find new islands, and we explore the seas, and she keeps us safe. She has a few things that she teaches to her acolytes, let folly rain on those who think they can stand against the storm. Let their wreckage drift on the waves for you to claim instead. She implies that to try and stand against nature, to try and stand against force like herself, is foolish. She also says the tree grows where it is told, the mountain rises where it must, but lightning strikes where it pleases. The wind blows as it wishes. Chart your own course. Listen not to the demands of others. Zephyr does not care for laws or tradition. She cares about what is in your heart, what you truly seek. And the sea does not reward the meek. The sea's treasures are only for the bold. Chase adventure and treasure and your heart will swell. She is the daughter of adventure, always at heart. Those are the things that was taught to me when I was a boy, anyway. She has roamed the planet. She fought greatly against the Court of Shadows and the Starbane, and she has a great hatred for them. They tried to take her family, and she is a vengeful goddess, if nothing else. Outside of your race, mm. are there temples to her? Of course, some people, a lot of travelers, people that live on the coast, will always offer worship to Zephyr. Anybody who has a reason to fear the sea or the storm will worship her. <coughs> it's been said that a few of the Arakokra also give some worship to Zephyr as they fly around the world. Well, birds in a storm won't last very long without her protection. <laughs> <laughs> Dead eye. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the point at which we walk in? <laughs> Could be. One iron bird walks through the door. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> hey, Rilla, uh, what's going on? How about, Quill, one winged angel? <gasps> one winged angel. <laughs> 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 Oh. We're just talking. We're yeah, just... you're talking on the way. <laughs> I, 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 no, I just thought Ayla just gasped. Like, that's amazing. <laughs> no. Oh, Ayla. Uh, Ayla would not no. do that. No, okay. that was me. Um, Ayla would not. <laughs> But yeah, there are some. Um, Goliaths also like to worship Zephyr. They live high up on the mountains, but I think that there is something about Zephyr's primal savagery. One thing I will tell you, Ayla of the Lederlan, many of my people will... We are good people. The orcs, we are a, a great race. But there is something dangerous about us as well. A curse. Zephyr's curse. Along with many of her great gifts, many orcs are prone to something we call the glint. It is when their greed for avarice and gold outweighs their sense of adventure. Some of them can turn quite nasty. You should be cautious. He kind of like goes, he, he turns <coughs> quite sad when he talks about that. <coughs> that hasn't affected you? No. For people I know. Interesting. He just nods. But yes, anything else? I think I just need to find at least one other elf who has been blessed by Zephyr in the same way. Well, if this other one that you mentioned of has the power of fire, I can't imagine that is necessarily Zephyr's, but perhaps from another continent or something like that. But the she Lord is Lord mainly of storms. The Lord Alan is four clans. Hmm. I don't know if the four clans have different powers, or if they're all Zephyr, I don't know. I'm afraid I can't help you with that one. And if the goddess did not deem to give you an answer either, I'm afraid not. 
and then he kind of like looks around. And I think that's probably the point where we hear kind of like the door open um, and four unusual figures uh, yeah. fill the doorway. Uh, for those of you just arriving, especially for Lucius, the smell of the place is, is quite off-putting. Um, it, it does smell like sour beer and sweat. Yeah. Uh, you can see the floor is covered in straw. Um, it looks quite rough. It, it's, you know, it's not like this is a bad guy's bar. It just looks like this is like where you know, people a bit down on their luck go for... Yeah. It's rustic. Very strong liquor and not much comfort. It's rustic and sticky. Yeah. Yay. Oh. <clears throat> the smell is so bad. Is this where we'll find Gideon? And my feet are so filthy. I've Alan, got a Alan name. Looks over. Oh, they're take, making too much noise. Who are you? What are you doing here? Sorry? Oh. Hello? Oh, Hello, hey. guys! Hey, Oh, oh, guys. oh my goodness. Oh, is Sentry uh, drunk? Remember? You hear oh, very... <laughs> <laughs> is Sentry drunk at this point? Have you been drunk? Oh, it's very, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it. It was not me. Do the orc what? got her drunk. How? I promise. He just puts an arm like this orc. And for the four of you appearing, there's this, you know, he's probably like 6'2", six, 6'3", six, very burly orc, uh, shirtless, has an arm around Sentry, covered in tattoos, big long dreads, like proper like big thick matted dreads down his back. Um, uh, I immediately blush. Okay. We made a new friend. <laughs> Who is? Remember I said companions. Hello. These are your companions. <laughs> Hello. It's an odd bunch, okay? I can understand the Guardian, but, and he kind of looks, he's like, okay. Do you have anything to wipe off mud from my booties? Are you asking this to the orc? Yes. <laughs> oh my god, booties. <laughs> She's gonna electrocute you. Bye, nice <laughs> knowing you. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. Oh, that's a shame. Very well, it's good to meet you. I'm Lucius, Virion Elowin Elanaster. It takes getting used to. Um... He nods, he's like, mm -hmm. I am Kalu Otoma. Pleasure to meet you, Kalu. I'm just like, hi, my name is Nova. Just That's Nova. Really Nova, speak up. <laughs> Big hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's like nipple stares at you. I'm <laughs> just looking down like... <laughs> you can see his like, yeah, his big abs. Oh, he's very, is... he's very Dwayne the Rock Johnson. <laughs> this is this Quill. Uh, hi, I'm Quill. Who is this? Did you... Is it Qu Quill or Quill? Quill? Qu Quill? You said I'm Quill. No, I'm Quill. Quill, okay. sorry, I was distracted by who? Is who? Kalu. No, Kalu Otoma. But what, who? What? They I missed him in this they bar. They had a fight. They fought, what and then the the Aileen and Aileen got knocked was to the ground. Was it much of a fight, Guardian? I don't know if it was. He beat me up a bit. It he was very cool. Yeah, it's fine. And he's still standing. He bought me a drink. It's fine. Of course, he's still standing. Sentry, <laughs> do you need a rest or something? No, I'm fine. Everything is fine. <laughs> what did mm. she have? I don't know. I, didn't I didn't know even know Guardians could, could get drunk. Mm. She's been drinking this, and he kind of has like this ceramic, very rum-heavy drink. Oh. It's uh, very good. Uh, Would yeah. any of you like one? And no. Like, I would. <laughs> Never again. What about you, little one? And then Valor's just like, uh. yeah, I'll have one. It's like, okay. Be careful, <laughs> Valor. That looks very potent. It's like Barman, and the dwarf eyes Kalu for a moment and just raises an eyebrow. Kalu puts a silver piece down. He's like... I'm not clearing up after if she throws up and I mean, slides one of these drinks. I do. <laughs> Go on, little one, drink this. Be careful. It'll give you hair like mine. <laughs> it's very tasty. Mm. <laughs> Sandra, how much have you had now? Half. <laughs> <laughs> you watch as Val is like. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's not for you, Val. I'm gonna just. I'm gonna just take it from her. <laughs> Just she like drinks a big gulp of it before you wrestle it out of her. It's like, <laughs> excuse me, bad person. Do you have anything for? Do you have like a boot polishing boot polishing service or a boot polish? <laughs> nope. You don't. What about any tailoring, laundry? <laughs> you Lucious, must. You Lucious, must be joking. Let me clear it up. He's got alcohol. Yep. Oh, could. That's where it ends. Right. We yep. said boot. <laughs> <laughs> Food polish. Have you been drinking? Where have you guys been? Are you, are you, are y'all lost? You need I think we're getting drunk off the, the, just the general just order. Just inhaling that. Yeah. Wow. So close uh, to that. No, we're not lost. We're actually here for, we're looking for, um, for, 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 for a guy called Gideon. Gideon. Hey, when you say that, the barkeeper's face kind of like <laughs> half smirks, but also half kind of like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Gideon. Yeah, get, uh, golden touch. He like thumbs to this, passed out, 
kind of bundle of cloth with white hair at the end of the bar. He thumbs and he's like, if he owes you money, take him outside before you beat him up. I don't want any more blood in my beat bar. No, we're looking for Gid. He's like we an need ex a manager. Mr. Golden Touch. He's, what? He just points over to the guy, this bundle of crap. We're gonna Reverse. enter into the spell clash. Yeah. Okay. We got this form. You're so really gonna have to like elaborate here because I've had a few drinks and okay. I don't know what the frick you're talking about. You would love spell clash. People I'm, beat each other up. Yeah, with spells. Do they, with that, they that, don't get hurt Do they though. beat each other up with actual weapons? No. Spells, no. all spells. spells. And they hit a oh, bat. No, Ayla, it's really good. It's like the big flash in, there's all these lights Is and a man blood? with a loud people voice. people get hurt? Ugh. I think his feelings got hurt. Yeah. No, there's no pain. That could be amusing. I don't want you to hurt each other and get hurt, please. No, no pain. No pain. Sentry. No. Sentry. We've got shields. Was that a sentence? <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> so, no one got hurt. Look, only my boots. Hmm. Got muddy on the way here. Oh. I'm just gonna like pat Sentry on the head. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, I don't like the sound of this. They don't really get hurt. They have a shield in front of them, and the aim is to uh, destroy the shield. So and you're you not allowed actually to... hit the actual person. No, if you do that, you get dispelled. Dispelled, expelled, that one. Mm. But oh, you do get, you're like this, apparently 10,000 gold prize. So who's competing then? We've got three. Lucius! We've got three forms. The Who else is prism man. Uh, what was your name again? Prism man? Yeah. <laughs> the print, prince of colour, prince of... The pain bow! Contrast boy. Did you come up with that one? <laughs> I did! You can tell! <laughs> Contrast point. <laughs> painted print. <laughs> painted print. Painted print. The painted print. The painted print. Lucius. That's pretty good. Supernova. I know, it's really good. That was like you... smiling. <laughs> well, this is just you slurring a bit. Oh, no, I'm not. Sensory. Yeah. Sensory. 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 <laughs> um. Oh, All right, can I, have, I want more no. drink. No. <laughs> okay. Just sit down. Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> just sits on the floor. <laughs> She's just on the floor. Okay. Uh, no, so, why are you here? We have forms. I hold them, mm -hmm. them out. She's going to sign all of them. I can't be bothered. And we need to get a person to sponsor us as a manager. Is that and why you want the drunk pastor? Apparently, out? Yeah. he's a manager. I did not expect him to be drunk pastor. Apparently, he out. rants and raves about spell clash, and you shouldn't. Oh, uh, shouldn't. No, we, maybe he is how, the guy then. Yeah. Yeah, I've he, heard him talking about the spell clash before. Yeah. Apparently it's... He's, he's Maybe this is a lost cause. But we can't give out 80% to, to Torgan. To Torgan Emmerdown? Yeah. Ayla, Ayla's friends, you want to talk to the, the drunkard? Apparently. I'm not sure I do anymore. <laughs> yes, no? Yes. yes. Okay. Kalu <laughs> walks over, grabs him by the scruff of his neck, oh. pulls him back. And then over his head, he just conjures like a big gush of water that just like rushes oh. over the guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> and he just watches the bark. He was like, "Hey, hey, come on, what are you doing?" And like, kind of calls out to him. The cloth, the the, the bundle of rags, and this white hair. The the white hair just plasters over his face, and you hear this kind of like <laughs> as he kind of like flails around. Um, and a, a hand kind of grabs the bar, and you can see that the skin is pure gold. Mm. Um, it's like glimmering and kind of glinting like gold itself as his hand kind of like, what? Uh, and he kind of like stumbles for a moment and groans. He's like, hey, come on, what are you doing? Uh, uh, uh. And he's like, wiping his face. <laughs> he's like, wiping his face, and like looking around. It's like, uh. Yeah, and he like looks around, he looks up the orc, he's like, what are you doing? Why am I outside? <laughs> Come on, get out! And he's, you can see his face as he kind of pulls the hair around. It's like pure gold, like his skin. He's got golden wow. skin, golden eyes, wow. and then white hair. But he looks like a fucking mess. <laughs> like he's got about three days, like, you know, like a good stubble, like a really bad stubble <laughs> kind of thing going on, like most half of a beard. His eyes are really heavy sunk. It looked like dark rings under his eyes, bloodshot. He stinks and he just looks like a mess. I'm just gonna like, while he's blown, I'm just gonna gently kind of put my face in his view. <laughs> and I looks up, he's like, Hi! What the fuck do you want? Are you Mr. Golden 
touch. What, do I owe you money? I don't know what you doing. Fucking Ganassi, what are you doing? I'm Come just on. smiling, like, hugely. Uh, like, no, I don't have any money. What do you want? Get out of here. I need a spell clash manager. Yeah, on the contrary, we can make you money, potentially. Is that a fucking bird? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, like, looks over, he's like, is that Winston? And he looks at the body, he's like, Win, what is, am, I, am I dead? Am I drunk? <laughs> And he just looks and he just shakes his head. He's like, ugh. All right, what, what do you want? What do you kids want? You want an autograph? No, Fuck off. we need a manager for Spell Clash. How the fuck you want a manager? Because we have to sign, we, have, we need them to sign up. Look, we have oh, forms. You, guys, you kids want to sign and up? We oh. need a manager or referee okay. or something. Hey. I don't really understand it. To blue, me. blue girl, blue girl, shut up. I'm a I need a drink. Yeah, First time, before don't, anything. Don't take that turn with net. Don't you take, don't take that. How dare you? Oh. <laughs> Fancy wow. boy, give me a drink. <laughs> okay. <laughs> get you a drink. Hard drink. I need a hard drink. I can't. I can't think. Uh, uh, and he just rubs his head. I think you've had rather too many drinks, if you ask me. What I didn't ask it? you. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. uh, he, the Kalu just kind of drops him, uh, and he kind of like slumps onto the chair. He's like, "What's your fucking problem, huh? Get out of here!" And he just tries to gesture him, and he just Kalu's like. <laughs> Idiot, and then like slaps him on the side. It's like, Ugh. Ugh. Uh, I don't know all right. how useful this is gonna be. Uh, the barkeeper's uh, like, Give me three coppers, I'll give him something. Yes. I'll give him something. Uh, uh, sure, here. Takes a copper, gives you the change, mark it off. <laughs> uh, you don't have unlimited silver pieces here. Uh, he takes the money and he puts like a some sort of like brown, like you know, liquor or whiskey or something. Gideon is like, Ah! Ugh. All right. Start from the beginning. Honestly, I have I don't know what the beginning is. You guys are gonna have to. Right. But so. Are we sure we? Here's your drink. <laughs> are you sure we want to trust this man with? I mean, we're here now. We can at least hear what he has to say. Don't you just say you need you need someone to manage? You need a man. You what? You want? Oh, for the for the form, right? You yeah, need a signature yeah. for the form. Why are you kids getting it? Don't get into spell class. It's gonna fucking ruin your lives. Just don't bother. Well, I mean, we, we heard that you used we to... We don't want our lives ruined. No, we just want to... Uh, then, don't, then don't go into spell class. That's what I'm telling you, kid. Why? It's a bad idea. Why? It's a... Look, I did it for 10 years. I, you don't know who I am? No. You know anything about spell class? No. no we watched that's our probably first why. game just like 20 minutes ago. Your first, what, 20 minutes? You what, and now you want to sign up? You crazy? It but, looked spectacular. Yeah, I mean, of course it looks spectacular. They spent gold making it look spectacular, and it's all really nice and fancy. And they promise, well, you win all the gold, and then you get the gold, and then you live a life, and it's great, and you've got women, and you got drink and drugs and everything you want, and then boom, you're in a bar being harassed by a bunch of kids. Did you lose? No, I didn't lose. I got you... swindled. It's a long story. Anyway. Right. Uh, are you set? You really want to do this? You want to go to the spell clash? Honestly, I'm quite put off. Well, to be fair, you've said that spell clash is bad, but really, I think swindling is bad. Swindling's the reason you lost your money, and not spell clash. Drugs are bad. I mean, yeah. that's true. Yes. All right. You got me there. It's, <laughs> what I mean is, spell clash is full of assholes. All right. I mean, look at me. I used. To, I was. I was guilty. I was Gideon Golden touched. I was handsome, loved by women. I was famous across Savona. People want to meet me all the time. Now look at me, huh? Now look at me. What do I look like to you? I look like a schmuck. I mean, you look, you look the yes. same, just tired. Yeah. You look like. Is that a fucking guardian? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, golden man. <laughs> fuck, she's she traveling around with a guardian? A drink, yep. Yep. Holy shit. <laughs> a drunk guardian, oh, it's yep. That's very rude. Hi. Hi. I All mean, right. People technically still want to meet you. I mean, we were told to find you. Who told you that? Miss Daphne. That the the Good kid prop. the kid at the the arena. Yeah. Yeah. It is, oh man, I guess she's not being paid by by what's the dwarf called the the Clash of the Champions. What are they, what's Torgan. the guy? Lo, that local guy. Yeah, yeah. T I don't know. He's I guess he's not on his payroll then. I guess. Well, you told us to go to him as well, but those are our two options: was you and him. Well, don't go to him. Whatever you do, if well, you do want to do it, fine. But don't go to them. Jeez, that company will rip you off. It's the worst. Well, here we are then. <laughs> you were the only other person she told us about. Can you not just sign a thing and then let them go? Yeah, I mean, I tell you what, I tell you what. All right, fine, yeah, okay. I will sign your papers. 40 gold. 
40 gold per paper, assign it, whatever you want. Uh, not per paper. How much are you guys paying Give me a persuasion this check. Thing? 100 gold per form. Mm. Shut up. <laughs> persuasion. Yeah. No, it's a six. <laughs> it's like, well, listen, you know what they do, right? 80%. That's the thing. It's not just 80%. Let me tell you what's let me tell you what Clash of the Champions does, alright? Because I know those bastards, right? I used to know the guy that runs the whole thing. They say, oh, we'll give you training, we'll give you equipment, we'll set you up and we take 80%. Except what happens when you lose? What happens when you lose that first match? Oh, suddenly that 80% is more than 80%. Now it's 120% because you gotta pay back all the equipment you borrowed for all the training, for all the legal <coughs> stuff. You gotta pay back on all the administration fees. Now suddenly you're in the hole and you owe money to these scumbags, all right? Question. Yeah. Did you not read the small print? I didn't need to read the small print. This was my fucking, my old boss set this whole thing up, the scumbag. But you didn't read the small print. I didn't need to, kid. I was already a star before these schmucks were running this game. You should always read the small print. So wait, were you? Idea. Mm -hmm. Why don't you just go in the street, shoot some spells at each other? Then you don't need to pay any money to do that. Come on, don't. Street spell clash. Oh uh, well, let me tell you, you're a warrior type, right? You got a big hammer, you swing that around. You think that's a big, big schlemiel? You think you're a big star, swinging your hammer around? A big you don't understand spell clash, kid. It's not about just firing magic at each other. It's about the, it's about the crowd. It's about giving people something to believe in. But why, why, why would you care? Because it's a, the crowd. Because it's a, it's a whole thing. It's about being more than just a warrior. It's about being a symbol. It's about being something that people can get behind. Yeah, yeah, and then and then having everything swindled and ending up in a bar talking to kids. That's what he said. It's like being a leader. You see, of now I can see why this one would be interested in being a, a star. But you guys, well, tactics. You've been sucked. It's in. a tactical game. Yeah. And you see right. me in a fight. I'm awful. But it awful. costs a lot of money. How many yeah. forms? Three. What about a drink of form? 60, 60 gold, all three. I mean, we're already playing like 300 gold to do this. That's the, That's the uh, entire... Sunk cost fallacy. The entirety <laughs> of all of our money. But what sort of return will we get? Like, if, if these guys are going to endorse us and give us equipment... This guy said that you're going to have to pay even more. But only if they sign up with those schmucks at Clash of the Champions. Are you going to swindle us? No, I ain't got no... I, look. You give me the 60 gold, I sign your forms, you do what the fuck you want, all right? You go and you fight, just do the spell clash, we're done. Do Boop. you coach us? Why, you wanna, what? Kid, look at me. Look at me. I'm pathetic. Why you want me to coach you? What, I'm a drunk. I think you look pretty cool. Are you being genuine? Hmm. Make a persuasion check. Ugh. Natural 20! <laughs> Unless you want me to roll that one again. There's a moment where he looks at you and there's a little glimmer in the eyes, and he kind of like looks, kind of really taken back. He's like, oh, don't look up to me, kid. That's a bad idea. It's just gonna land you in even more problems. Um, you even know anything about Spell Clash? You know how it works? You know what you're gonna come up against? You fought, have you fought a Spellcaster before? I mean, we, we, we've fought many things with spells. All right, but have you fought somebody else who's slinging spells back at you? I believe we have, yes. Yeah. All right, so maybe you know a few things. There was that wyvern, and then the ghost. And this is out in the lowlands. For a ghost? Uh, and a wyvern? And a uh, goliath. And a goliath? Yeah, he, well, he did actually. And a guardian. The eye, but guardian, yeah. Yeah, that was feral. This one? No. Uh, Went down into Dwalin Den. <laughs> we, um... All right, give me your fucking papers. <laughs> <laughs> give the papers. He holds his hand up, and you can see that there is a, a glowing kind of glyph or rune that appears on his hand. And he presses it against each one, and the glyph transfers and glows on the parchment. Ooh, that's very fancy. Mm. Shuffles him up. He looks at you. Sentry, I don't. No, what happened when you sent sentry? No, no, that's different. <laughs> we should get her a glowing orb on her hand. Mm. You could use your laser thing. No, don't, don't use your laser thing. Oh my, Keep oh my it. goodness, can we enter her and put the laser in there? That's is not that, the spell. She's not allowed. That... Mm, it's not magical not enough. spellcaster. Oh. Sorry, Sandy. He holds the papers. I would bet for you. I'd All right. You. I need 30 gold at least. I got some people I need to pay some money back to. Okay. He holds his hand out. I give 30. Okay, he takes that. He hands it back. He's like... I will come by. When is your, when's your preliminary? Tomorrow night? Yeah. I'll come by. I'll see how you do. 
you just watch us play. I mean, we... Any tips beforehand? Yeah. Listen, if you can't handle the preliminary matches on your own, Prelim there's no hope for you. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't handle the preliminary matches on your own, there's no hope for you. You pass those, you get through your preliminaries, maybe there's some things I can tell you. Okay. All right? Now, get, the f get out of here, come on. Well, it's, it's, okay. You don't want to be stuck in a place like this. Come on, get out of here. No, you're right. It's it, I didn't want to say anything because it's disrespectful, but it, the smell is just atrocious. Mm. Thank you, Mr. Golden Touch. Yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> this place is a dump. What are you doing? He looks at the dwarf. He's like, looks at Kitty, don't you know, um, it's the one spell I always forget. It's uh, Presti... Presti... Digi... Tation. When you ask him if he knows the spell, he's like, yeah, I know the spell. He just looks at you hard. I wish I knew it. I wish I had a coach to tell me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, some things we know, but we can't do anymore. And then he just turns, takes the drink. Uh, come on, get out of here. You guys, I'll, I'll come by. See you tomorrow. Enjoy, your, I, enjoy oh, your forms. Can I roll an insight? Yeah, you can roll an insight, yeah, for sure. 11. 11? I mean, yeah, clearly something. Something struck a nerve, or there's something there that's oh, upset. Um, I How do you forget? I'm just going to leave I'm him alone. i to myself. I'm going to leave him alone and drag Lucius away. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Such a, is it Cantrip? Sentry. Sentry, have you finished the <laughs> drink? <laughs> yeah, I think I'm good. It's so easy. Vala, <laughs> Vala looks over and she's like, I don't feel very well. Uh, Vala, we feel kind probably of go outside. outside. Okay. She kind of gets up and she wobbles a little bit. Why do people drink that? It's really gross. It's really good. It's really good. <laughs> Does she <laughs> vomit? Yeah, no, she doesn't vomit. She just kind of goes like, <laughs> like that. <laughs> Let's get out of this. Have you finished the whole one now? No. Um, yeah, I think I'm good. Okay. I think I need some air, but it's fine. Okay. Yeah. So you guys make your way outside. Kalu looks over. Before you, before you all leave, Kalu yeah. kind of looks over at Ayla. He kind of stands up to his full height and he kind of walks over. He's like, Seems like you've got some business with your friends to attend to, so... Thank you for the ass-kicking and the information. <laughs> You're more than welcome. I'm welcome to uh, kick your ass anytime you want me to, huh? Well, maybe next time I'll kick your ass back. Maybe, maybe. And he kind of offers like a big arm. Um, like he kind of like, like takes your forearm yeah. if you like go shake his hand. And he kind of brings you in and kind of like slaps you on the back. Um, and he just goes like, when you can, one thing I'll tell you. Zephyr is not the kind of goddess that wants you to sit there and pray to her. But the next time you go into somewhere, you shouldn't. The next time you fight something that can kill you, just whisper her name. That keeps her happy. He kind of gives you a nod. Sounds like my kind of goddess then. <laughs> I figured that she might be. And he kind of like nods and he's like, Nice to meet all of you. I'm going to go back to drinking now. Well, if you're around tomorrow and want to see people's ass getting kicked at Spell Clash then. Apparently that's where we'll be. Sure, maybe, maybe. I just give him a really shy wave. Bye. Like, looks at you oddly. Wait. The little one's kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, I agree. What are you laughing at? Nothing. You're laughing at me? You're so handsome. <laughs> Did you actually say that as yeah. over? <laughs> he's kind of a bit taken aback. He kind of looks over, he's like, uh, uh, thank you, I think. <laughs> and he kind of gives you a nod. I'm going to go drink now. Yeah, bye. <laughs> bye, Kalu. Uh, bye. bye. <laughs> Wait, Waves. You fought that guy and lost? Yeah, have you seen him? There was a... Uh, yeah, I know, but you're Ayla. Yeah. He made lightning come out of the sky. Oh. Okay. He okay. doesn't wear shirts. He doesn't need to. Uh, all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't great. I'm a bit sore. Nova, but. you like him. <laughs> you do. I don't. He's too muscly. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's time we put you to bed. I think I, I want to go sleep. I, I, I'd hate to say it, but... But it's early. What time is it? It's like not that late. It's like 4 or 5 p.m. Oh, what are you... With that? Maybe just had the whole day, like in town. Mm. Maybe we'll just take you back and you can have a nap. And if you're feeling more perky, you can meet up with us. Okay. I want food. I'm hungry. <laughs> Let's take you to. We can take it back to Arvel. Her... No, I don't think that Arvel should see her until she's, you know, not like that. Yeah, he's gonna ground us. I mean, if anything, Arvel's probably like that. No, I think he's 
No, he's not going to approve of this. It's fine, we'll go for a walk. Do you want to go for a walk, Fella? Okay, can we get food? Maybe. I want a cake. M maybe, <laughs> maybe. maybe. Sentry, do you want cake? Yeah. Yeah, cake, 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 Dead eye. Dead, 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 dead eye. I kind of like that. That's cool. Mm, dead eye. Can't be called painful. No. <laughs> no I painted don't want that. prince. The painted prince. Painted, painted like prince. Like the ghost. I can. Yeah. <gasps> like the ghost. That ghost prince. Horribly traumatic. Yeah. That's. I mean, that's the, what we were referencing cool. the entire time. I could yeah. use it as an emotional shield. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I can be that. Supernova of the world. Yeah, supernova mm. of the world. Supernova brackets of the world. Yeah. It's a second. It's like the motto. She yells of the world. It seems well, like a long name otherwise. I so mean, it's the not form, scientifically accurate, way, but... By the way, on the forms, there is a bad. announced name. Like, oh. there is, oh. you have to have something. Uh, Lucius the Painted Man. Pa right. Prince. Lucius the Painted... Shit, I didn't... Has anyone got a spare form? Oh, don't worry. I've got my little bag of sand. Come on. Yeah. You just swear, Lucius. <laughs> you did. The lowlands were hell. affecting him. I am not going to the magician's cup ever again. Okay. Okay. So what's Lucius the plan? Lucius, the painted prince. Yes. Get cake, apparently. Yeah. Um, cake. <laughs> yeah. There's not really bakeries on East Street. Not ones that you that Lucius probably wants to go in. Um, so you have to head towards North Street. And I'd probably say that there's probably like a little cafe, like uh, bakery near Rose Meadows store. There'd probably be like a little, uh, little bakery. My treat! <laughs> Yay, oh. thanks Sentry. Yeah. Sentry, you're the best. Everybody deserves cake. Okay. Yeah. You're right. There's like a little place inside, like a little dingle of a bell. There's a, a little halfling lady that's uh, cooking, baking, a little halfling couple, probably um, man and woman who like serve the place. You get like a little table near the window. The rain is beginning to die down. It's not as heavy. Um, and there's little bits of blue sky peeking through the uh, through the clouds as well. Um, <laughs> uh, it probably costs for everybody like a gold for like probably like hot drinks, like hot chocolate and hot coffees <gasps> for, and cakes. Oh my goodness. Finally! Is yeah. there any boot cleaning services? <laughs> no, but the little halfling man it, it offers one of their like dishcloths uh, for you to wipe. I don't want to trail mud through your fine establishment. He's oh, well, that's very kind. Here. He hands like a little dishcloth. <laughs> Thank you, finally. <laughs> I mean, you have to clean your boots. Oh! <laughs> oh, um... Lucius, yep. do you not know how to clean your boots? Yes, you just kind of wipe yep. like this, I assume. Just wipes the mud around. <laughs> <laughs> yes, getting it right off. Perfect. <laughs> I'll be right here. And the moment we go outside... Yep. <laughs> you gag like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. Yeah, I mean, when you, as soon as you go outside, it will, they will get muddy again. Yes, yeah. <laughs> because yeah. the rain is stopping, the mud is still there. Um, Thanks, for cake sentry. That's okay. Did sentry? Did you get cake for yourself as well? I'm just kind of. I'm I'm okay for cake, but you guys can all have cake. <laughs> just look at it. It's probably you got like a hot mug of like yeah. you know hot water or something that you can yeah. hold. Hot mug. So that's hot mug. One. Not quite a hot warm plate, but a hot mug is close enough. <clears throat> It's one gold for everybody, so one it's gold. just one okay. gold. One, two, okay. three, four, five. How many are there? Uh, six people. Six people. Mm. In, not including you. Seven not including, including me. you. I need to do some maths. Is there seven? No, it's just one gold. Just one. Yeah, it's just the one for everyone. It's not one each. No, it's not yeah. one each. It's oh, just one gold just overall. One. Oh! <laughs> Rhiannon's drunk is then. Yeah, I think like... like <laughs> it's serious. It's role play. <laughs> yeah. It's like she the drank heavily in me. the break. She's a method act. <laughs> no, I love it. I'm a uh, big fan. All right, well now Thomas says lean back. Lean back. Yeah, you're in the camera. There so, we go. There we go. Uh, since you, I'm very interested here. You drank that liquid, and it affected mm. you. Yeah. Yeah. I I feel like maybe my 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 vines may have absorbed some of the alcoholic. Stuff. Personally, I love that we now know this fact about you. It's mm. never happened before. I'm guessing it's the same as I think it should happen all though. the time. Well, what? How? Because it's same with poison and disease. Hilarious and slightly adorable. 
So if oh. you drink water right now, will you sober up? Will it hydrate your vines? It might yeah. do. Yeah, it would. Functions exactly the same way as it does in a human. Hmm. Part of the magic if you drink hot it. cocoa right now, will you feel warm and content? Like a hot plate? Yeah. You inside. will become a plate. But inside me! <laughs> <laughs> you will be a plate. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's the highest I've ever heard Sentry go. That's the highest I've ever heard anyone. I'm going to have a hot cocoa! <laughs> yeah. So you take it. Uh, Sentry, you take this warm, like, little ceramic cup, mm. you bring it to your lips, and there's this aroma, because you can still smell and stuff, you see this aroma of this kind of rich, chocolatey, mm. thick uh, thing, and then you begin to sip it, and it's hot, and you almost have to stop for a moment, it's Ooh. like the inside of your wooden mouth, kind of, you can feel it kind of sizzling away, Ooh. but as you begin to drink it, and it, you don't have a tongue to burn, so you can drink it while it's still very, very hot, <clears throat> um, and you can just feel this hot sensation, and it kind of goes inside, and you can feel it spreading around across your chest, across the cavity mm. inside in the matrix, as the heat disperses across your body. Mm. Wow. It's amazing. Steam <laughs> comes out of mouth. Yeah, probably like a little bit like when she opens <laughs> her mouth, like, yeah, because the outside air would be warmer than, would be colder than the, the air inside now. Mm. So she's like, oh, this that is a sight. Hot cocoa soothes everything. How have I never done really this does. before? How, how, do you, how do you feel? Are you uh, drunk? I, 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 I think feel it takes like time, right? Well, I imagine, but. It, we didn't even know they could get drunk before. Mm. I think that Guardians would metabolize the alcohol quicker than a human bloodstream would. So she gets drunk very, very quickly, but then it goes very, very quickly. We're yeah, going to canonize that for, for Guardians. Can nice. That they get drunk Locking very in. quick, That's but they sober up. That's important right there. Did <laughs> yeah. she get the Asian flush? Kind of, yeah. Like, it's like a really sudden, like, Boom. super drunk, but then it stabilizes. <laughs> Mm. And you can get, still get sick as well. You can still get like oh ill and goodness. nauseous and stuff. You throw up like bolts and nuts. <laughs> it just, just wouldn't throw up anything. It, just, oh. it makes her feel nauseous yeah. and uneasy. Well, good. Now yeah. that we've got that um, covered. Yeah. <laughs> um, What's the plan? Well, Filling out forms. So, I mean, yeah, we're, nice we're almost at the time where we need to go meet uh, with the field warden again. Um, oh, yeah. We had to meet her at, at dusk. Mm -hmm. right. yeah, which in... is around now. So, okay. we should head off and do that. Mm. How also, are you feeling, oh. Bella? She's got like cake, like half of the cake in her mouth. Good cake. I like it. Have I'm some, sleepy. Have some hot cocoa. Bella. Okay. Mm, that's good. Okay. <laughs> cool. Um, <laughs> she's just, she's Sweet. quietly like, she's got that like, somebody who's quite drunk but is sobering up but is now like quiet and is just like, doesn't want to feel sick. Should we take the drunk child home before going to see the yeah, field warden? Yeah, it's probably not a good idea if we see the field warden with a drunk child. Yeah. I'm basically an adult. The spell clash lady was stupid. <laughs> she was stupid, but yeah, let's just. Uh, do you want to go for have a nap? You're nope. sleepy. You, you but just, I want to. You sit. just I wanna, said you were I want to lay down. Okay. I don't naps are for babies. I'm just gonna <laughs> look so for like I don't need a nap. Do you want to go to Naps sleep? Great. Kind of. Well, there we go. We can do that then. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take you back to to Arvel at least. I mean. Disapproving or not, we can't take, we can't take Valor. Field to Master Meet is going to be so boring, Valor. Yeah. We'll, yeah. Take you, we'll take you back to our. She's the lady with the silver hair. She's cool. Yes, she's got boring things to say, I'm sure. Mm. She hasn't okay. got cake either. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just, she can see her like eyes like half shutting already, like trying to fall asleep. Let's take her back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, just piggyback her back to the... There's a point where she stops, like, she's like, no, I don't want to, and then eventually she's like, Ayla, carry me. <laughs> <laughs> you, like, pick her up, put her on your back, and she's like, nah. <laughs> falls asleep. Um, and yeah, you take her back. So when you get back to the inn, which I believe, I can't remember the one you were staying at, actually. Oh. Uh, Barrel and Over. The Barrel and Over, that's it. Um, when you get back there, uh, you're greeted by the doilies, cat pictures, and horrible furnishings oh, yeah. of, the, of the tavern. <laughs> Um, and when you make your way up to the rooms, um, you hear Arvel speaking with somebody inside. Uh, oh. And you just basically overhear like a, a brief bit of a conversation like, all right, so I'll send the room, I'll send the funds. Uh, once we get back to Gold Throne, uh, I'll make sure you get your in, uh, your, I'll give you some extra and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, well, thank you, Arvel, that's mighty kind. Uh, of course, you know, uh, we'd like to see some more business from Dagos, uh, Dagos uh, Trading Company. And he's like, yes, yes. I'll make sure that happens. I'll speak with the, uh, I'll speak with Glinder, and uh, we'll see if we can figure some things out. And he's like, "Oh, that's good, and that's mighty nice to hear. Oh, it was very nice. And you, th you're sure that this will be enough?" He's like, "Yes, this should be plenty. All right, all right. Take care, then. Good to see you." 
He's like, all right, very well, I'll just get my hat. Uh, and then the door opens and you see this white bearded, old ass looking dwarf. Yeah. I mean, he looks very, very old. He's got a big kind of prospector's beard. The mustache kind of blends into it. Deep set eyes, big bulbous nose. And he's like, oh, well, my apologies, everybody. Just on my way. And he tips his hat. It's good to see you, Arthur. <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, you're a big, a big one. <laughs> Dodders down the stairs. Hi. And Arthur's like, all right, see you later. Uh, okay. Hey, friends. Hi, Arthur. Um, who was? Uh, that was an old friend of mine, an old business partner. Okay. Um, he works for a company called the Cherry Star Trading Company that I used to do some business with. Uh, he's agreed to loan me some money until I get back to Gold Throne. So oh. I no longer need to rely on your hospitality. While uh, Luke Quill is talking to Arvel, I'm just hmm? kind of hurriedly ushering. Okay, into yeah, bed. give me, um, give me, um, give me, you give me a stealth check. Oh, Lord. Natural 20. Oh, <laughs> nice. So you're like, <laughs> just sweep in, taking a moment as he turns yeah. to face Quill, and you just sweep her in. Yeah. And you, she tries to like argue or something, but you're like, eh, you shove her in, <laughs> um, put her into a bedroom, and then yeah, she's just like flops onto the bed, probably burps, and then passes out. And do a tuck her in. Yep. <laughs> Super tight, can't move. And just a little prod on the forehead, and sleep. Nothing. <laughs> just like. <laughs> <laughs> Snoring already. Um, um, yeah. It's like, ah, what about the rest of you? You all well? Uh, well, we are spell clashes now. Are you getting involved in the spell clash then? Uh, yeah, me, Nova, and Lucius will be. All right, all right. Um, uh, Essentially, you're going to be cheering them on. Slash cheerleaders. Laughing. I mean, cheering them on. <laughs> I have a question about spell clash. Do they have guards? What? Hmm? I mean, yeah. I, why do outside they Why? Because I'd like to watch, but I'd like to also be able to keep an eye on you guys. And also, if anything happens, I want to be there. I don't think you oh. can interfere. Yeah, and I don't think anything's going to happen either. There's magical barriers everywhere. And they said that they look after us if we get poked. Yeah, here's a uh, flyer program. Oh yeah, Lucius Lucia fought loads. Like Here's one for you. Oh, yes. Everybody oh, gets one for you. Oh, okay. and oh, thank you very much. They talk about it. <laughs> it's, they, they say the safety <laughs> is top priority, so you we should be totally fine. Are you sure? I mean, we watched a fight and no one got hurt. It's fine. We'll, 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 be, we'll be there. But I'm, uh, I'm crumple a little... it into my chest. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm a little concerned, actually, from what Gideon Golden Touch was saying. Right. He said that there was some level of swindling and corruption and whatnot going on past the face of it. Yeah. It doesn't surprise me. Uh, Gold Throne is it's a great city. It's a great place. There's a lot of money that goes through that place. And, well, if anything can make folks greedy and uh, willing to do untoward things, it's gold. So I think we should definitely have you around. We'll try and get you in the, uh, the cloakroom or something like that. <clears throat> I've heard that there's pretty big prize pools for these kind of competitions too, and um, lots of folks are uh, willing to do anything to get their hands on a lot of money, so you should be careful. We should. But it's good, I think it's good. Y'all have got uh, gifts that a lot of us don't have, and um, if you can do a little bit and earn some money on the side with it, why not? Mm. It's more a time thing. Obviously we all want to get to Golden Throne, don't yes, we? Of course, yeah. yeah. But I mean, now it. that I've, rec I'm, I'm gonna invest some money into some good horses and uh, I think we can speed up the journey. I think we can be in Gold Throne in a few days. You think so? Ooh. Yeah. Uh, if we leave now? Well, leave in the morning. I don't want to be traveling too much at night if we can help it. Uh, okay. Why? Well, I kinda said we do the spell yes, class preliminary tomorrow night. No, that's and fine. Also, we said we were gonna find a guardian called Breeze. I mean, look, all I'm saying is it will take three days from Kaylee's rest to get to Gold Throne. Oh, and if you need to a day or two days here, that's fine. We can spend some time here. I've got money now. I can make sure me and Vala we get our own rooms and. You know, pay for our own meals and all that good stuff. As so long as you're happy. You um, speaking of which, I believe I owe you all a little something. And he uh, hands out a pouch uh, which contains 400 gold. 
um, I mean, huh? hands that to Nova specifically. I believe I owe you this. I oh, don't be ridiculous. What's this for? That's for healing my leg. It cost you a lot of gold, right? What? I did say I would pay you back. But you, we said we also said that you were our friend, and and I appreciate stuff. that. And if it wouldn't been for you, I would never have survived that ship. So you just take this gold. Well, I mean, the deal we had was when we get to gold throwing it pairs back. That's fine. Like I said, I've secured some funds. I got plenty of gold to last us till then. And well, we this can... way, if anything does happen to me en route, I've made sure I've paid my debts. Thank you, Marvel. It's all right. It's what I owed you. Well, we we're in. 10,000 back, weren't we? Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah. now, that is interesting. If if y'all do make it into this tournament, you know, a lot of these big duelists, they have sponsors. And the Dagos Trading Company could certainly do with having a promotion like that. Well, Ooh. consider this your sponsorship money, because we need 200 gold to sign up. There you go. That seems pretty perfect to me. What's the problem? Well, I mean, we already signed a guy... Yeah, but that's our referee. No, that's our manager. Oh, I thought he was our sponsor. still have a sponsor. Yeah. Oh, well, in that a case... A sponsor is just... Basically, it's somebody who pays money to for equipment promotion. and training and promotion. Do we wear all. coats with your name on it? I mean, mm. We can talk about it's it. There's a lot of that in Skyjab. Let's see if you all get into this tournament first. Oh, well, we can wear hats like yours. <gasps> Not me, but those guys. There well, yeah, hats. We can have an, an Arvel-specific hat. I mean, my company yeah. doesn't sell hats, but... No, but I mean, like, put your name on it or something. In light. I see. Mm. Ooh -hoo. Well, Magic we'll figure that out bit. later anyway. Okay. But sure, take all the time you need. I'm in no rush now, so. Well, in that case. Thank Good. you, Avil. All right, all right. Oh, uh, How's Vala? She Vala was... She's so tired. We've Sleeping. been walks, walking around all day. She's awake very early. Had a lot of cake and a lot of I think all the roads catching up with her. Yeah. It makes sense. She's been through a lot then. And the weather's been so bad. Mm. I wouldn't check mm. on her. She's probably out like, out like a light. Well, I'm going to stay here tonight. I'll probably just be down. It's like she's drunk or something. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Nothing. It's just, you know, just the way she was. She's very tired. You're so tired that she was, she was stumbling. <laughs> Deception check, please. No, just looks up at the ceiling. 15 <laughs> plus... Uh, deception. Yep. Three. 18. Yeah, that makes sense. If she's tired, probably would come off a little drunk, <laughs> right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, uh, I'll be, I'm going to go downstairs and get a drink. Uh, don't know if y'all have drink. plans. No. All right. Well, we found out something fun, though. Sentry can get drunk. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Really? Apparently so. Yeah. She's fine now, though. I, it, Interesting. Guardians. Yeah, seems to have. You mentioned gone. something about a guardian this breeze or something you want to go oh, yeah. see as well. Yeah, apparently he comes into town every now and then. Mm. Uh, right. Knows stuff about guardians that would be very well, interesting. Sounds good. Sounds like there's plenty of opportunities then. Oh, well, yeah. Yes. Um, no right. rest in Kaylee's rest. It's <laughs> uh, uh, kind of counterproductive. What a joke. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, a joke. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Marvel <laughs> looks alarmed at Century at the weird laugh. Oh, yeah, we found something else out. <laughs> guardians can laugh. And that's it. <laughs> she can also right. drink cocoa. It's very nice. I okay, that. I'm gonna go get a drink. Uh, thank you for all these wonderful updates. <laughs> all right. Arvel, do you know yeah. how to... Um, this will be an actual maybe... question, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you know how to find someone specific within the Abbey? Apparently there's a wild elf in there that... The Abbey? I mean, I've been spending a few days, I've spent the last day talking to folks. Abbey's a pretty dangerous place right now, Ayla. It sounds like the Church of Palador here is kind of going through a bit of a battle for leadership. Um, there's something called the Children of the New Dawn. It's like a new group within the Abbey that's rising up. Um, and they ain't too kind on folks like Wild Elves or uh, many of you folks either. They're very hum pro-human, pro-dwarf, Savonans only kind of deal. Like how that you, fella at the gate. How young are they? No, not all of them young. I'm guessing the name is just a, you know, a oh. name. That's, yes. But, um, mm. yeah, I mean, it'd be pretty tricky. I, I might know somebody. I can put some feelers out for you if you want. There's a wild elf, apparently. All right. I don't imagine there's too many of them in there, so maybe... No, yeah, sure. All right, well, let me... I've got an old friend of mine. He's, um, he's, a, he's a monk. He's a friar up at the uh, Abbey. I'll ask. Much appreciated. All right. I got chefs, man. 
one of Tom Hazel's muttered jokes to only himself. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah. So uh, do you guys, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna go find Nalika tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, okay. we will, yes. At okay. dusk. Yeah, it's dusk now. Exactly dusk. Dusk. Um, you'll make your way back to the Not Queen's... my face. Hmm? Oh my hey. god. Podcast listeners, I'm so sorry. Sorry, we've got party uh, poppers. <laughs> Uh, you make your way back to the Queen's Plaza, this large central area uh, with the wealth of the town. You can see that the, the cathedral to Siaska is very, very busy. Um, at night, it seems many of the worshippers come out, many of them carrying little lanterns, like paper lanterns, um, each with a single candle. And they're kind of carrying them inside the church. Um, and you can see that it's obviously some sort of service is going on. You also see at the very middle of the town, this mausoleum is lit up at night. Um, it has like fire uh, braziers kind of scattered around the gardens and the main central building is illuminated by magical lights kind of reaching up and casting these long shadows. This, per this polished marble, white marble uh, mausoleum at the top of this hill in the middle of the city. Um, aside from that, you easily locate the guild offices, the, uh, the field offices as you did before. Uh, knocking on them, a, uh, a young dwarf male uh, leads you to Malika's offices where she is, uh, you can see that she's um, a little bit more, less formally dressed. She kind of has like her tunic has got like a couple of buttons open and she's kind of leaning on her desk writing. She kind of pushes her silver hair and she's just like, ah, the mysterious travelers have returned. Um, please come in, please. And she gestures. Okay. Uh, there are no chairs. <laughs> oh. But uh, the door is kind of shut behind you and she's like, how has your day in Kaylee's Rest been? Busy. Mm. There is a lot to do in the town. We it sent is. a letter and we met. I, I wasn't actually asking people. for a breakdown of your day, it was more of a general and question of how that. your day In that was. case, good. Excellent. Uh, well, I went along to the Sands residence um, and I made some inquiries with the guardians mm -hmm. and with the gate guard. Um, everything seems to collaborate your story. I am a little alarmed at what I learnt from the Sands residence after meeting young Estelle. Would you care to elaborate on her condition? We don't really understand it ourselves. No. We just know that this agent of Starbane was running experiments on girls. Uh, and specifically girls who looked like the young girl in our group. Mm. And this happened to them. We don't really understand it ourselves. So as you say that, a voice from nowhere Maybe. just kind of speaks out. I did it. It was me. And you see her face kind of flicker over all of you. I was the one that did it to that girl. It was my fault. And Lucius, you hear this loudest of all as it echoes from the item attuned to you. I guess, do we all hear this? I'm guessing Malika <laughs> hears this as well. Yeah. I'm going to try and cover up the cloak. I mean, you don't know, but her, her form shifts as if reacting to something. She's just like, yes, there was. The young girl mentioned an object. She looks at Lucius. Is that so? Well... You are, you did not lie to me specifically when you came before. But I don't appreciate keeping this information from me. You're carrying something very dangerous, Mr. Elanasto. Don't we all carry no, something? No, not something that drains girls of their life force. I know, I've Three told him about died. this. Three girls died, four in fact. Yes, don't remind me. It's like, yes, four. Killed them myself. Drained them of their life. Only way to survive, they, they made me or did they? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what they did. Is it all just part of his plan, Callus? The Court of Shadows? Or is this something bigger? Is this, was this something else? I don't know. It's just kind of muttering, kind of. See, this is what uh, we've been dealing with since taking it, thus to stop the Ages of Starbane having it themselves. Well, the easiest solution to that, Mr. Lanesto, is it should be destroyed. Night well. Frost was made to do it. He was manipulated and made to do it against his will. We still punish people that commit murder, even if somebody else is behind it. Somebody working for a mastermind, a, a criminal gang, would still be punished for their crimes. This thing killed four people, and it's done something to young Miss Sands that seems irreversible. Even the priests couldn't really determine what's happened. It's like part of her soul is missing. Well, I mean, it, to be fair, it's, it was not this that killed it, it was the person using it. It's like... Are you sure about that? I'm 
How much do you know about this thing, this object? Not a lot. There's a lot of stories of old enchanted relics, things that came from the dark beyond with Starbane. And there are greater things out there in the universe. My people, the Celestials. Things like that shouldn't be trusted. And I don't necessarily appreciate it being in my city. Now, in a sense, we don't really have laws against punishing bows or cloaks, I suppose. What I am doing is I am warning you to be careful. You can already tell that it's not quite sane. Yes, but uh, I'm trying to wrap my head around what it is at all and where the sanity even comes into it. Mm, indeed. If anything, it's better that someone like Lucius has it instead of someone worse. Well, it could always be secured. There are facilities here or in Gold Throne where it can be kept. But, like I said, we don't really have laws for this kind of thing. And I'm not the type of woman to just unjustly punish someone because of my gut feeling. But I am worried that you carry it with you. And it has done something quite evil. Just be aware of that. Ah. Uh, and other news, uh, Miss Sands, the Lady Sands, was very upset with uh, the bounty hunter Sanna, who has now left the city. Um, again, I did not pursue any criminal acts against her, but uh, the confrontation when I arrived was very unpleasant. Um, uh, um, there was a lot of blame shifted in Sanna's direction for the death of uh, Galen um, by the widow. And I believe that Sanna has now returned home to the Iron Burrow. Um, Having concluded my investigation, I have no formal convictions, uh, and you are welcome to stay here in Cali's Rest, but I will be very honest in that I have instructed the Harvest Guard to keep an eye on you, more because of, and then she looks towards Lucius, what you're carrying, more than your person, more than your um, personage. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should hand it over. Maybe that's the right thing to do. Night Frost needs you, Lucius. Yes, but who wants to say that the world doesn't need it? If we leave it here, people are going to come after it. Yes, but they can protect it better than one man. You're not just one man. No. I suppose they am a team, yes. But it's, a, it's an establishment of people, guards. It's their job. And also, if I manage to reform Tiangong, maybe Tiangong can help. Was to say that we're carrying two potentially dangerous things. No. I don't believe that yet. Well, I don't think we should be so sure. If nothing else, I would recommend that you inquire with some priests or somebody very knowledgeable of magic about it. That does not yeah. seem like a very... I would not carry it. I would keep it locked away. But that is my decision. Yours is your own. As I said, there's not really, there's not really a process for this sort of thing. So you're free to go about your business. Just understand that you will be watched. Um, and she just nods. Well, we're going to be in spell clash tomorrow, so it won't be so boring for them. Mm. She kind of eyes it curiously. Hmm. Just thinks for a second. Well, I have nothing else. If there's anything you require. Uh, is there anyone in the city we could talk to about this? Starmore and Starmore or Elanis of the Church of Siaska. Okay. Um, there is uh, there is a priest of Hesper in the city. I wouldn't necessarily rely on him, however. Um, he is a little odd. I mean, so you've deep. seen us. <laughs> <laughs> he is, he is Dean, Dean Simon. Do you not want to visit that anyway? Cool. Yeah, no, I do. So, two birds, one stone. If anybody would know anything about oh, this object, <laughs> <laughs> the god of magic will be connected in some way, I'm certain. Thank you. Is there a way for us to meet someone in the Abbey, the Flamebright Abbey? The Abbey? Um, if you If you needed to, the Abbey is open to the public, although they have been a little more distant of late, you might find that some of them are, some of them have some very strong views on outsiders. 
It's something that I'm aware of and I'm trying to keep an eye on, but the Abbey is very well liked in the city. It's been here for a very long time. The Church of Palador has always had very close connections with the people of Savona since the days of Queen Cali and the War of the Three Sisters. So it is kind of ingrained into a lot of people's lives around here. Um, but you could go and speak with them if you required to. They're not really a law unto themselves, but they keep themselves separated from a lot of other matters. Do you know if there's many wild elves within the area? No, no, they would not allow it. They wouldn't have... Um, most of their clergy are humans and dwarves here in Savona. There may be a few half-elves, um, similar halflings, but they are generally not well liked within the, the church themselves. They normally transfer to other places. Uh, here in Kelly's Rest, it's very, very much a faith for, of Suvonans for Suvonans. And I can't say that um, I've seen any of your kind. Um, Super welcome here. Yeah. Oh, um, it, uh, is there a guardian that comes around called Breeze? She thinks for a second. Uh, I'm afraid that I don't keep entirely uh, close tabs on the guardians. They seem to be very trustworthy and I've kind of left them to their own devices. I, I'm not aware of one called Breeze. I know of the, the ones who are residing in the town, but I don't recognize that name as one of them. Oh, okay. Um, fair enough. I'll be here for another couple of days, I'm sure. Yeah, Might might see them then. All right. Um, cool. Well, it's free to go. Let's go then. Perfect. Right. You just gestures towards the door, it opens. We're not arrested. No. Thank, thank you for your uh, investigation. She nods. Um, let's not cause any trouble. Very smart idea. Yeah. Good. Words. You make things sound suspicious, do you know that? I know. Mm. I just get very anxious. <laughs> mm. Thank she you. Just, she half smiles and then, yeah, she just waits for you to leave. Right, let's go. Okay. Where to? Let's go. Uh, what do you guys want to do? Well... We could go to this abbey. At night, uh, so they it's... they have an evening service. <clears throat> we could have a look. I don't think I'm welcome within there, though. I don't think any of us are welcome. No, it's a human-only thing, apparently. Yeah, we, we have a deep lack of humans. Mm. Very true. Mm. Humans or dwarves. Humans and dwarves are the main population. So Arvel said he was going to look into it. Maybe I can wait to hear from Arvel, and then we can go tomorrow. We could go... We could check in with the Guardians and see if Breeze has been by. We could do. We can go to see... The Temple of Hesper. Temple of Hesper. Yeah, let's go there. I mean, it's a big library. Never. <laughs> I'm there. I start walking up. <laughs> okay. So you want to go to You're the, going in the wrong direction. So you want to go to the Temple of Hesper? <laughs> uh, I guess so. If everyone else is yep. okay. good with it. On the way, I'm gonna link in to Night Frost and see if I can have a mind conversation. Oh, you just you just you think what you want him to try and hear. Night Frost. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Master Lucian. I assume you heard. I did. I did. Your thoughts? She is not wrong. Perhaps it would be better for me to be destroyed. Perhaps I will only bring more trouble to you. Perhaps I will kill others. Perhaps I might. What if I kill you? What if I draw strength from you again, like I did those girls? I, I don't know, Master Lucius. I, I, I don't know who I am anymore. I'm so long in the dark with nothing, and then to be awoken in that way, I... How did they use your power? I don't know. Were you willing? I don't think so. It was dark. I didn't... There was nothing there for so long, and then I felt a sense of strength, like it was being offered to me. And I, I drank it, I, I fed on it, I consumed it. Aware of what it was? I don't think so. Did I? Did I know what it was and I fed anyway? Was I that desperate for energy? I don't know. And it just goes quiet again for a moment. Well. Yeah. Does Lucius just look really zoned out yeah, while he's talking? Like, obviously, he's like, he's, it looks like he's thinking of other things. Um, uh, the, as you're making your way uh, North Street, uh, you, pass, uh, you pass Rose Meadows, uh, Apocrypha 3. Don't go in there. Um, and along the way, you begin to hear, you can hear a soft singing coming from an open theatre. Now that the rain has stopped. 
um, <laughs> there is like a little kind of like alleyway uh, that leads off of North Street and you can hear a very gentle male baritone -y kind of voice kind of just singing general kind of like folk songs um, and you can hear the occasional smattering of applause. What does it sound uh, like? Kind of sounds like, um, you can't quite hear the lyrics, it's kind of bouncing off the words, but it's kind of a very soft like, <laughs> that kind of like droney kind of, you know, deeper male voice. Mm -hmm. um, and there's the occasional pluck of an instrument or of a, of a lute or a lyre, you're not quite sure. Um, and you can just hear like occasional smattering applause as you're making your way down. Um, as you approach the tower, you see a squat little tower with a blue tile roof that looks almost comically like it came out of a fairy tale book. It sits at the far end of a series of shops and stores, um, and the tower is made of worn stone and has none of the flair or tininess of the local area. The blue tile roof does look impeccable, however, at the front is a thick, sturdy wooden door with beautiful crystal uh, symbols set into the door itself. It depicts an open tome with a central eye and four angelic wings behind it. Um, there is a small brass plaque that has also been attached to the door by the handle, and in common it says, no spells, no secrets, just knowledge. Hmm. Wow. Um, Sounds like the perfect place for you and Nova. Hmm. I like that singing. S the singing? Yes. W really? Yes, yeah, it's really good. Yeah, we hear it. I, I did, yeah, but we're, 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 do you want to... Want to go now? No, no. I'll just okay. <laughs> Very nice. It was probably that fur bulb they were talking about. Oh uh, yes. <laughs> well, we can go after. Yep. Yeah, it's still there. Yep. Temple. Temple. Esper. Temple. Go. Nova. This is your. This is your area. And I guess. Did you not want to find stuff here? Have well, I just dragged you here? Well, I guess I could have a like Nova. You could maybe help me have a look. See yeah. if I can find anything. But. And also, we can talk to the dean about um, uh, night frost, and. Maybe there's something about Prime in there? Maybe. Or Solvin? Yeah. Or Breeze? I don't know, maybe he's graffitied some of the walls or something. I have stuff to find out too! It... You always have stuff to find yeah. out. Yeah. Always. You know where to look though. Yeah. Especially with this, and I hold up my library pass. <laughs> <laughs> Is that valid here? Yep, it's valid everywhere. Okay, good. Well, that'll be useful. Shall we go in? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Okay. Open the, open the door. door. Let's go do some okay. reading. Or I push the door. Yeah, you have to push it. Uh, it's like it opens. It's obviously stuck, and you push it, and you hear the scrape of books being moved out of the way. Oh god! And <laughs> the smell of like dusty books and old books just wafts over you, mm. and you step into the most chaotic mess <laughs> of books. Just stacks of them, piled high, like a hoarder's house. There's wow. just piles of books. Almost like corridor mazes in this round tower, just piled everywhere. Um, and then there is a faint, like, donk, bang, from a rusted bell that was obviously above the door that has just rusted and fallen into disuse. Uh huh. Um, and just silence and just empty rows of stacked old books. No. This could be tricky. You... Oh my stars. <laughs> never gonna leave. This She's really needs a better leave. organizing system. You can't just leave them in piles on the floor like this. Yeah, and you can see that there was a huge pile in front of the door <laughs> that you've pushed out the way. This isn't even remotely alphabetized. I can't even say the word, I'm so upset. <laughs> um, <laughs> it is distressing, I'm not gonna lie. Nova, Nova. It... Is that like a... I'm just like itchily trying to like sort a stack out, just like, oh my yeah. gosh! The, the covers, the dust cut, like they're just covered in dust. Um, most of them, most of them don't have, they don't have titles. They're just like symbols. You're not quite sure what they mean. On this the, is on the lost the, cause, is Nova. A, I don't think this is a Hesper thing. They, they, they... Uh, as you peek through, you make out at the very back edge of the wall, hidden behind these plaques, uh, uh, Quill, there is a shrine, a very small kind of narrow kind of built into the wall with a raised lectern and a book with the symbol of Hesper behind it. Right. Well, maybe As that's... it's like, oh, this is a temple. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a temple, but it's got a lot of books in. I think that's basically it. It's not a very respectful temple. Who's? Who's? The door! Close uh, the door! Uh, Cold! Uh, door! Cold! Uh, someone close the door. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hello? Yes? Are you, are you the are oh you God, de the dean? Dean Simon. Dean Simon. Um, 
Why are you looking for Dean Simon? Well, I we just knew there was a Dean Simon here. There's one here. Is that you? You can leave now. But we're here. I'm I'm here to get. What? What I, do you want? I I want to see the shrine and also the library. You see, <laughs> like one of the stacks that was blocking the shrine, half of it gets moved by like this old decrepit pair of hands <laughs> that you can now see it from the doorway. You've seen it. You could leave now. It, there's no one else coming <laughs> here. What? Why? Why would people come here? Why wouldn't they? Why? Good. Why would they? But why wouldn't they? Good question. Yes. Why don't they? Well, that's a great question, but I've got an answer for you. Answer it then. Why wouldn't they? <laughs> that's not an answer to a question. That's another question. I'm answering your question with a question. Are you though? Yes. Mm. And you're answering my question with your question. A little form kind of shuffles <laughs> out. He must be like five one. He's short. He's a human, but he's right. short as hell. And he is dressed in blue robes trimmed with little bits of white um, and he's old. He must be in his like 70s, 80s, liver spots, wrinkled skin, very like shrunken thing. No beard, um, bald headed, so just like baby faced almost. And he kind of looks out and he's got big thick spectacles and he's looking directly at Quill. He's like, why wouldn't they though? <laughs> <laughs> no, I see. No, I, I get it. But, yeah. Wait, did you say why wouldn't they or why would they? What did you think I asked? I think you said, why wouldn't they? So I'm going to answer your question by answering with, why would they? Wait, no! <laughs> oh, you are smart. <laughs> Am I? <laughs> What's smart? Anyone can be smart, bird brain. What? Anybody can read books and claim to know, oh, I know about history, I know about medicine. <laughs> <laughs> but, so what are you then? Me? Yes. It's an old man. In a room full of books? Yeah, messy one. Look at it. Why are, why is it like this? Why why are all these people here? Oh, they None of you are speaking. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm, I'm in the background sorting something out. I'm already happy. Don't touch those. Head. Get your hands off my books. I'm muttering under my breath like you haven't even got dust jackets on these things. Like, <laughs> Put my books down. They're not yours. They're not in the proper order. Why would they be? Well, this is not a library. So Knowledge you... doesn't have order. Knowledge is everything. Knowledge is chaos. It just makes it easier to find something when you want to look for something. Oh well, no, that clearly means you don't know what you're looking for. If you knew what you were looking for, you'd find it right away. That's a good point. What if what you seek, you haven't found yet? Oh, that is a question. Then an order's not going to help you, are you? You don't know where to look. Well, you've got to start somewhere. You do. I don't think knowledge is chaos. Do you not? No. Why? The universe is chaos and knowledge mm. brings order to it. Do you think so? I believe so. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. What happens when somebody discovers something that nobody else believes? Do you know what happens then? War. Well... What's war? Pretty chaotic, right? It's pretty <coughs> chaotic. Yeah. It's structured. So does knowledge really bring order, or is it that society enforces order through the use of knowledge? Facts bring order. Do they? I... Yes. What about when somebody comes up with a new fact that contradicts an old one? Then the previous fact is no longer a fact, it's a myth. But people still believe it. But they can't believe it because it's false. But they still do, don't they? But they shouldn't, because it's not real. I might well. go back to that pub, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> yes, yes, go back to the pub, get drunk. That's Now that's some knowledge, that's some sense. That is some sense. Uh, not for me, but that doesn't... Go on then, off you go, elf. Oh, good God. Nova, I'm just going to come over and help you with that. Just, Why? Well, find information. What, what do you need to know? Look, don't stick around here if you don't want to be here. Go on, get out. This is a temple, it's not a prison. Do you like order? Clearly not. <laughs> just, just muttering behind a stack. Well, does it matter what I like? I'm interested. Mm, never had much use for it. Well, if you didn't have order, you wouldn't be dressed. Or turning up to this place every day. You're right. And he just takes his robes off. <laughs> oh, okay. That's biology. But I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Look at it. It's dangling around down there. He just uh, jiggles uh, it. Uh, yeah, it is. Cool. Ah, and then he just sits, like he pulls out like a stool and he sits there with his legs spread extremely wide. Is this the man that could potentially know about... Uh... Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Have, have a look at my cloak, would you? There's a moment. Mm. Puts the robe back on. 
god. <laughs> Seems you do have something quite interesting. Perhaps I should get quite serious. Why are you carrying an Eterna with you? And with that, we're going to end today's episode. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Amazing. What a nut job. <laughs> we know it's called an Eterna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we know. You guys knew that, one. but it's you only knew and that very few so people. We were specifically yeah. told by the Eterna. Yeah. Oh boy. We're going to wrap things up there. Nice. But to anyway. Um, he knows. It's a shame. There was a bunch of other stuff I wanted to get to, obviously. But, um, yeah. Well, and spell clash. Next, next time. time. Next, next time. time. All right. Um, it's always nice. Three more years of high rolls. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So yeah. Thank you all for watching. We're so sorry about the technical problems. It seems yeah. like there was a couple of little flickers, but I think we were pretty much stable for that. Not bad. After the break, we stayed yeah. live. Um, so we stayed live. So very sorry. We will try and fix those uh, and get those sorted for next time. Um, and we're going to read some donations. <laughs> yeah. Ola Renve has donated with no message. Thank you very much for the donation, though. Thank you. Meta Manu coming in with that quarter hundo again. Thank you so much, Manu. Um, happy birthday, everyone. Look for those. Thank you for those wonderful three years. I can't wait to see where your adventures will lead you in the years to come. Looking forward to the one shots. Wink, wink. Yeah. Thanks very much. Oh, me? No. Nope. Uh, wait. Uh, Steve? Steve? Steve will do it. Steve? Steve? He's on it. I can Steve? see the cursor moving. Trying to find that tiny. Steve! Steven! I can do it. <laughs> Steven! Well, it actually worked though, because when you did it, it didn't update on the big screen. I'm going to do it. I'm doing it. Okay, that Trust looks like it's it. actually working. Um, bam. Seabradrium, uh, uh, 1500 Twitch bits, thanks very much. Uh, here's a nice bolt to my favorite knaps next to wish you a happy birthday. Also, Mark, you are on my personal Mount Rushmore of DMs. Much love Rushmore to you, everybody. Of DMs. Thank you very wow. much. That's quite a comment. Compliment. Oh, I want to see what that looks like, actually. Uh, go on, Kitty. Uh, Fretz a lot has said, Happy third birthday. Been watching since May of 2017. You've really been a blessing since I just got out of hospital. Thanks for all the hours of entertainment. Love you all. Wishing you all the best. Hashtag justice for Hazel. He's fine. Thanks. He, gets, he has justice <laughs> every week now. I get bullied every week. Um, Roland the Fighter has said, Love the show, guys. Don't know if you're still looking for a team name, but the strange folk stuck out to me when a random NPC called you that early on, or even estranged folk, because you've all been estranged in one way or another. Mm, yeah, that's strange. good. Um, Smithy4107, 4017. Mark, I'm a man of my word. You all deserve it. Happy three year anniversary. This has made my day after a stressful three hours of statistics homework for levels. Mm. The struggle is real. Now I'm running out of characters, so we'll leave you with a quick goodbye and. And then that's it. I think that's. Tell me when to do it. We've had that one already, haven't we? Oh dear. No, no, no. It's just a double donation. It's just a double donation, yeah. Oh. It's the same. Thank you, C. Bradion, again. C. Bradion, again. Same message. Same message. Thank you very much. Frank, the NPC, with a quarter hundo. Hey, everyone. Had to miss last week because I was helping a friend with their depression. But I am back this week and ready for some Iron Sloth action. Will we finally meet Daddy or do we still have to wait? Oh, that's going to be a while. Yeah. Ah, there we go. Oh, I see. Night Jim with a hundo! 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 Yeah! Hundo! Oh! Oh, Lord. Uh, happy birthday, <laughs> High Rollers! You guys are up there with uh, Critical Rollers top D and D content. Aww, Thank you very much. Amazing. Uh, thanks, Mark, for help with injury saves. Um, first time it came up, fighter took eighty-eight damage, so no <laughs> chance of saving. Then lost an eye. But you wow. see, doesn't it make oh, sense? Somebody it's... takes eighty-eight damage yeah. in a single hit. Yeah. It should make sense that you have something that lingers. Yeah. Someone's yeah. going to lose an eye. Yeah. Yeah, quite, literally. quite a few donors today. Uh, okay, yeah. I'll do a couple more then. Uh, Stokey Boy, um, Wagwan Brethren, happy three Wagwan years. Wagwan Brethren. Joined this amazing group uh, later than I should have, but so glad that I did keep up this amazing stream, and here's to another three oh. or more. Uh, yeah. Also, Mark, your beard has not changed in three years. What's your secret? It's just literally trimming it. Yeah. <laughs> it changed for Bowsette. Yeah, yeah, it did, yeah. yeah. Uh, and Nightjar, thank you very much. Happy third birthday, you wonderful people. Thanks, thank Nightjar. you for everything. Thank, thank you, Nightjar. Yeah, we should probably keep going. Thank you to Desiree55. Yeah. Shout out to my friend Ranger Sepper for the mysterious, from the mysterious land of Australia. Oh, yeah. He reviews Aroa's episodes like I do every week, and he can never watch live, so this is my little gift for him. Hmm. Well, hello in the future, Ranger Sepper. Daft Day41 has donated a half hundred. Yeah. 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 Wait, pop it! Three years!
a fantastic <laughs> Sunday fun day content. It's amazing to look back and see how far things have come from that first dungeon with the green screen oh, falling down in the background. Oh, yeah. oh, oh God, yeah. that a masterpiece we get treated to each week. Long may it continue. And now we just have wire cards breaking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now we just have black screens. Remember the little green screen lanterns we had as well? Yeah. 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 Uh, Sergeant Grievous has donated. Hello, Rollers. I just want to thank you for all the great streams and comedy. I just found out that my gra grandfather oh, passed oh, away, oh, and you are all helping me. Uh, bleh, you are all helping me a lot in getting through this rough time. Thanks for all the great years, and I wish you the best. Sorry, and I wish you many condolences mm. for your bad news. Mm. Um, thank you to Colorine. Having a snow day, uh, had a snow day off work, which gives me a great opportunity to watch live for once. Hey. Settled in with a cup of tea and just in time for party hatch, bunting shenanigans, impromptu podcasting, and spell clash. <laughs> spell Thank clash you for the fun. Spell clash. Over to you, Trotter. Spell clash. Art fishing with a quarter hundo. Woo. Thank you. Thank you guys for being a regular companion for my sometimes lonesome weekends. Always managed to make me smile and my imagination be satisfied. Thomas, don't you dare. S Mitchell, age six with a hundo. <laughs> Happy birthday! Congratulations on three. So we should do this for every hundo. <laughs> we did last time. Of amazing storytelling and thrilling adventure. <laughs> Thank you kindly. <laughs> Bevla with a half under. Half under! Half under! <laughs> half under. <laughs> I that was like a really uh, pathetic one. It was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Happy anniversary. I can't believe it's been this long already. Time flies yeah. when we're having fun, I guess. Here's to another year of great stuff and good times. Thank you. Thank you. Dweg donated. Hi, guys. I asked the question about necromancy over the 2018 rollback. I just started watching Critical Role and was curious if Cam's arc with the vampire was at all inspired by Percy's backstory with Whitestone. Bit of a stretch, I know. No, yeah, that's but... the funny thing. Is a lot of people like said, like, oh, is this inspired by this or is this inspired by this? It's like, no, we were coming up with like, I mean, Cam wrote the idea like when we first made the character of Morella and then I had the idea to make Karen a vampire like then and there and it just yeah three into, years ago three mm. years ago um also is Gideon freaking uh Danny DeVito from Hercules I mean there's an element of like every sports underdog movie coach <laughs> yeah. like it's the trope of the underdog sports which is what Philoctetes is also he's the yeah. pastiche of that parody so it is that yeah it's like yeah it's that an trope. element of that yeah for sure T. Rich donated woo Three years of high rollers. I love all the great stories you guys make. Mike? 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 <laughs> Mike. Oh, stories, you Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, have you considered doing one-shots on fan-created scenarios? I mean, we just don't really have the time to do yeah, one-shots on any regular basis. Yeah. Like, and when we do do one them... One-shots are hard as well. Yeah, yeah they are. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you oh want to carry on? God. Carry on? Yeah. yeah. Rhiannon. Uh, Zafir has donated and said, Happy birthday, high rollers. Lucia's spell clash name should totally be Prince. His signature move, purple rain. Purple mm. pain. pain. Purple pain. pain. Oh, yeah. ah, I nice. can't read. Oh, oh my god. Oh, party pop is ready. Quick. <laughs> Not in my face. You gotta read it, Rihanna. Absurdity Matrix has donated $150. Oh. Hundred and a half. Hundred and a half. Happy birthday, high rollers. Can't catch the whole stream live, but I'm loving everything so involving the arena. Eight loud noises. Sweet. It was very Thank cool. you very Thank you much. much. Thank you so much. That's is that all of them? Yeah, crazy. Uh, yeah, we don't have <coughs> that. Oh, uh, Lightning Wing Dragon donated. Remember, remember the <laughs> the, the, <laughs> crew, the cowies of September. Remember, yeah, remember nice. the cowies of September. Thank you very much. Uh, Vaso Vagel Cinecope donated a half hundo. <laughs> for the hundreds of hours of light fall and the rowers that have been through winter break, High Rollers is the best. So glad to be caught up and watching live. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank, Thank you very you. much. They also did the uh, fan art in the. Oh, nice. Uh, generic Evil Genius donated a quarter hundo. I've been Thank doing you. my party since we all started watching HR three years ago, but last night they were coordinating and working as a group like never before. For a DM, there's oh, no like, great award than seeing a party come together like that, overcoming a challenge. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, lightning Wing Dragon, my god, here I am making a cake for my dad's birthday, and then in my ear I hear cake, cake, <laughs> cake. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was, that that was, that was this really campaign. Break break the cheese. Lightning, yeah. Wing, lightning Wing Dragon, the great cowie battle and robots drinking hot cocoa. Mark, what has this campaign become? Amazing. I mean, as yeah. expected, really. <laughs> uh, not all extenuated. Hey, hi, rollers. Looking forward to Supernova and Color of Magic kicking ass in Kaylee's Rest uh, Spell mm, Mania. That's a nice one. Hopefully sponsored by just fried potato slices. Maybe Quill could be heel. He's got the eye patch. <gasps> that's a wrestling uh, term. That's a wrestling term means. for like bad, bad guy. Oh, so your face is not heels. You're basically the race. Nice. I'll be uh, right. Varys donated with no message. Thank you very much. Lightning Dragon again. You know, I was kind of worried that this campaign might be too similar to the first campaign, but this is so much better. Lightfall was all too serious. I do understand that was the point of Rose, however, in a whole uh, other boat of laughs and funnies. I would say that it's about the same. I, I, I don't think Probably. it's any different in terms of like I comedy to seriousness. Bigger peaks and troughs. Yeah. Mm. Juto, serious. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but at the same time, Cam, serious? Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Reynard, serious? No. Yeah. 
Uh, <laughs> Ace of Thorns donated. Happy birthday, High Rollers. Three years already. Seems crazy, but we're also grateful for your adventures and your willingness to share them. Long may you continue. Thank you. Desiree donated. Again, donating again to say that I'm officially starting the Night Frost Protection Squad. We've got to protect our boy. PS Century was adorable this episode. I agree. Yeah. Woody donated. Thank you very much. Happy through third year anniversary. The recent lore heavy sessions have been incredible. Love seeing these characters develop. Nova being lo love struck and drunk robot mum are the funniest things to me. Keep on being amazing, mm -hmm. everyone. Azul Aura uh, donated. We had one daddy this week, and of 65 people who took part, Mahuhan and the Game Guy 415 bet correctly. Happy third birthday, much love to you all. The stream and the community are so amazing to be part of here for three years. When did you? Quarter Hundo uh, from Dem Denim Knight. Happy birthday, guys. Oh, Stayed up flash. 30 hours to catch this. I worked wow. nights. Wow. It's great to see you guys live now. Sorry for the issues. I hope they're all easy fixes moving forward. Anyways, I need to sleep. Good night or noonish now. And why, Mark? Get some sleep. Get some sleep. You. Oh, cool, Hundo. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Lightning Dragon, uh, Lightning Wing Dragon donated. Three more years, three more years. Happy birthday. Where is the Revenant one shot from the other one shot? I, what? Where is the Revenant one shot from the other one shot? I'm not sure what that means. Uh, the Game Guy 145, happy third birthday, guys. Been turning in every Sunday for three years in a row. And don't regret a single minute. If, if drunk valor is hilarious and central drinking, getting drunk is the most precious thing ever. Love you all. Have a good one. Thanks very much. Thank you very Thanks much. much. Thank Thank you. You. Thanks for all the donations. Thanks for celebrating this with us. Yeah. Uh, we'll be back next week, hopefully with no tech issues. Please cross fingers. Tech gods. Tech, tech gods, please. 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 Um, we'll please. We'll see you next week. Catch you later. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Oh, God, it's smoky. <laughs> Very smoky. Yeah.